Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hanfrey Municipal Budget Committee meeting for Tuesday evening, January 7th, 2020. Welcome to the viewers at home on Channel 22 and those who have come out to our meeting in our beautiful town hall facility this evening. Another reminder, you're able to watch the replays of all meetings on, channel, on the uh, town website by logging into the Town of Hampton website, scrolling down to Channel 22, and picking whatever meeting you'd like to watch, as well as looking at the schedule when they're replayed on TV. After our Pledge of Allegiance this evening, I would like to have a moment of silence for a longtime Budget Committee member here back in the 90s, Kate Pratt, who passed away uh, on December 29th uh, on a personal note. She was a close friend. Uh, Kate did a lot for this community. Her and Cliff and I worked on several things together, and I know Mr. Bridal alluded to that last night. She was a wonderful woman and uh, did a lot for the county. She was an 18-year county commissioner, a former state rep, virtually on Hampton Historical Society, First Congregational Church, you name it. Uh, she really was a fantastic woman, and we uh, give our condolences to Witten, Amy, and the three kids, and, and the, all the family. Uh, I'd ask Mr. Bridal to lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. this time on my far left to your far right at home and in the audience I'd like to start introducing introduction of members please Joyce Lepertis Larry Buckley Rusty Bridal Selectman's Rep Steve Henderson Brian Warburton Chairman Mike Wolf <coughs> David Moore Stephen LeBranch and our administrative assistant to my far left Barbara Kravitz thank you our first order of business is the review and approval of minutes from our December 10th meeting. It's hard to believe we met four <laughs> weeks ago, and we're going to be having a lot of meetings coming up the next couple of weeks. But thank you, Barbara. Uh, anybody have any questions on page one? Page two. Page three. Page four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight, and page nine. Motion to accept the minutes. Moved by Mr. Flop, seconded by Mr. Henderson. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Maureen Buckley abstains. Thank you. So under our business tonight, most all the evening will be spent talking about Warren articles, some that we missed, we didn't go over last time, waiting for more information, and others that just came into us. We're going to start off this evening, and you all should have received uh, thanks to Fred Welsh and Christy Pullen for giving us these copies of the, the material that was sent. We're going to start off with an article that I'm very proud to endorse and support. And I say that before a vote because I was a member of the Master Plan Committee for 2019-2020. Uh, Jason Bashan, our town planner, Tracy Emmerich, our uh, planning board chairman, and Connaby, who did so much diligent work with the surveys, and Barbara Kravitz, put a lot of this information along with many others, and Jason has worked with some state officials and received, received some money. I'd like to invite Jason to the table now to give us a brief overview. Um, just so you know, Jason and team became, came before the selectmen last night and a unanimous vote to support this warrant uh, this year to go on the 2020 Article 10. Jason, good evening. Good evening. So I, I'm pleased to be here this evening to present our warrant article for professional services to complete a comprehensive update of the Town of Hampton Master Plan. Um, this article that's before you is the result of many months of discussion and input from our Master Plan uh, Steering Committee and has gone through several iterations. 
And as noted, our, our committee includes uh, the chairman, uh, Brian, and uh, Barbara Kravitz um, also serves amongst other people, representatives from other boards, such as like the Conservation Commission, ZBA, and others. Um, that steering committee evolved from master plan sessions that began in June of 2019, and, and we're proud to have had members of all the various boards and committees serving. Um, the article requests the sum of $125,000 for the full comprehensive update of the master plan. Uh, this figure was derived through a comparison of master plan costs in several other nearby communities while also looking at population and valuation of those communities. Uh, we also obtained estimates from some consultants, uh, and this information was evaluated closely by the Master Plan Steering Committee, which unanimously supported the article and, and, and our methods of achieving that. Uh, we are very confident in this figure, and we don't expect to come back for any additional money based on our research. Um, we believe the article clearly and concisely summarizes its purpose and highlights why an updated comprehensive master plan is so urgently needed at this time. Uh, the, C, the key points include of the article include that it is required by law to be updated periodically. Uh, we need to meet more recent challenges to better plan for the future. Um, the current plan dating back to 1985 simply can't do that. Um, it will help to preserve, protect, and enhance property values and, qual and quality of life for Hampton residents. And will also enable the town to qualify for grants for projects that are otherwise unaffordable to the town. Uh, the process will also include a robust uh, public participation process, many meetings, many events that, that we anticipate will occur during this planning process. Um, while we have secured uh, $45,000, as was noted, from specific, for specific parts of the project, specifically those being the, the vision and coastal management components, that funding must be used exclusively for those purposes. Uh, the additional 125 that's requested from this article must be raised to ensure concurrent completion of all master plan components, ensuring a plan that is fully current, comprehensive, and user friendly. And I'd just like to touch briefly that, in, as was noted earlier, um, in, in advance of this article, the Master Plan Steering Committee developed a preliminary master plan survey led by Ann Carnaby, as was noted. She put in a lot of great effort working with the Rockingham Planning Commission to get that set up. And it's been live for a little over two months and remains accessible, at least through the end of January, perhaps longer. I'd like to see it up personally until the, the vote occurs in early March, but the, the group will discuss that further. Um, the survey can be accessed for anyone here or who may be watching. Who we encourage you to complete it. It's at publicinput.com backslash HMPS1. I do have some cards for the group if you want to. Uh, I'll just pass these around if you want to take a few of these. Thank you. Can you fill out the survey or share them with, with others? Um, we've received a lot of very valuable feedback so far, and as I said, we would encourage anyone who has not completed the survey to, to do so at their convenience. And that information, will, it's important because it will be utilized as we move forward with this very important uh, master plan process. So that's, that's my summary. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody may have about yeah, the process. We're going to go around the table. One of the comments I wanted to make was if you watched the meeting last night, and, and plus our planning board meetings, very interesting. I think Ann explained there were over 1,600 folks so far that have looked at the survey. <laughs> There's been approximately, I think, 400 that filled out two or more questions. Correct. Some very unique things, but the good news is people are looking at it. And the other way you can get to it, and, and um, Mr. Welch is looking into bringing it back to the top, but on the town website, when it first went out there, it was literally right on the front page. But because other things are there, it's moved down a little bit. So just kind of move your cursor down. I looked today, and it's I think right it's up back there. The top. It is. It's back. It's, it's right up at the top. top. Thank <laughs> yep. you. Good. So that's great. And anybody get home, you can take it uh, more than once if you miss stuff. But I'm going to start around here. Jason, excellent that's presentation. Okay. Mr. LeBranch. No, I'm fine with it, Jason. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Mara. Yes, you were here last year and yes, we discussed the master plan. And I yes. think you, you were presenting at the time <clears throat> the one we have from 1985, and it's so big, and it's I'm, if I remember vaguely, right. it was boxes of it, and nobody even knew what to do with <coughs> it because it didn't have didn't have a strategy, didn't have anything inside. It just it was just It was stuff. assembled piecemeal, basically. Yeah. Me? A chap piecemeal, like chapter here, chapter and there. And nobody right. was able to or had the yeah. ability to get anything out of it. Is right. that true? I mean, I would say that's largely, I wouldn't say 
you wouldn't get much out of it. It's it's outdated um, content wise. It's really not I applicable realize, to I mean, our. It's 1985. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So how often does the state or whatever require you to update it? Saying we haven't done it since 1985. They, they recommend every five to ten years. Is that a have to or recommend? It says recommend. So why didn't we update it in 95 or 2005 or 2015? <laughs> Certainly people should have. It's been my top priority since I arrived here in 2014. Um, that's why we, last year's article was totally different from this year's article. And that's why we came forward with that. And even though that article did not pass, we moved forward with this process because it is that important. It really is. I so, totally guarantee, go along with yeah. the fact that it's important and it's needed to be done. Mm -hmm. I have concerns in reference to what level it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And do you have a sample of what a potential thing you're trying to look at? So when if people are, is, like, for example, if I want to buy a car, mm -hmm. I like to take a test drive in it. I just Certainly. don't want to, somebody said, well, it's this, this, and this. I mm -hmm. want to try it out a little bit. Yeah. But, but compared to the past, is, isn't there a model or something that you had used well, the, in reference to your end results and then to enable that you're actually meeting the various facts that you said were going to be in the plan. Well, the steering committee, when we started back in June, one of the very first tasks that I had them do was look at a series of master plans from other communities and see what they liked, what they thought would, would be a good model that we could look toward as we move forward. The group thought, um, I believe unanimously, that we should go for something more concise, um, you know, short in length but to the point, uh, something that, that incorporates all elements comprehensively together, not necessarily in a chapter by chapter approach, which is why it's so important to do all f components of this project together. Um, so, so we've talked about it as a group, and, and, and what we don't want to end up with is what we have now. We don't want to end up with a plan <coughs> that becomes a big binder because you're only a, you know taking on one chapter at this point in time and another one later. It's just not effective. I mean, you could reference, I mean, somebody's looking at the plan in, in 2020, a chapter from 2005 isn't the same as a chapter from 1985, and, and neither one is quite honestly really effective right now given all the challenges that we face with, um, mm -hmm. you know, our coastal issues, flooding, uh, tra transportation, traffic, things of that nature. So. David, if I could, can I add, just to help you out, three of the communities we looked at where Exeter did a great job in their um, mm -hmm. master plan. York, Maine. Why? Because they're a tourist community as well. They spent hundreds of thousands. I forget what the number. They budgeted two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand just yeah. for York, Maine. And then we looked. We took it local more, and we said, let's look at Hampton Falls. Hampton Falls is a unique, very historical, very cultural community. But we wanted to see both aspects, like far-reaching. So what's closer to Hampton? What isn't? And interesting enough, this 125000 along with the monies, is one of the lower cost items. Is this 125000 always going to the consultants? Where's the $125,000 going to? It would be the, the consultants. We're going we're gonna to be preparing an RFP for, for the, this part of the plan. The group's going to be talking about over the next couple of months. We're going to start working toward that. And um, it would go to the consultants who would, I mean, we'd be working, obviously, with them, they would be reporting to the town as typically a consultant would, and, and I would be monitoring their progress and, and expecting reports the from them. I'm sorry? How are you evaluating the consultants? Well, we would, we would want update progress reports from them. We would expect that, and we, and we would be having regular meetings, of course, um, with um, the public, and, and the steering committee would be active, and the steering committee would have an eye on them as well. Absolutely. Yep. The reason I'm saying that, yep. I work for Liberty Mutual and Data Processing, yep. and we had consultants, and then there were consultants, and there were other consultants. Very few consultants, a lot of them was, the whole thing was, there's vaporware, there's, there's software, hardware, and there's vaporware. And, and some of the major companies were vaporware, but other companies had really good, knowledgeable people and really did help. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do you make the pick between trying to weed out to get to the real good consultants that really know what they're doing. Well, we've already we've already done that to some extent with our with the grant component that we where we received the funding for. We've worked with uh, the coastal the DES coastal program to have to get the funding for the coastal management and vision components of the plan already, right. and we had an RFP process already, and we had evaluated. Um, we got three. Uh, Three proposals. Proposals, yeah. And we evaluated the three firms um, using a series of criteria, 
and we ended up with Malone and McBroom, I can say, was the one that was chosen, and they scored highest amongst how our selected group of evaluators um, averaged out. So basically those evaluators were uh, Natalie from the Coastal Program, myself, uh, Lori, Tracy, and Ann. And, Ann. Yeah. and uh, we came up with, uh, we scored them, and, and whoever scored the highest got, got the project. What were the scores out of the three companies? I'm sorry? What were the scores of the three companies? The scores? Yeah, you said you scored yeah, well, them. Yes, we scored them. So you I had to have them together, right? Right. So I think we took an average, and basically the average was 79 for the top scoring. The other two scored 76 and 70, respectively. So we did, uh, and we had a series of questions. We had a criteria about responsiveness to the proposal requirements, the qualifications of the firm and the project team members. They provided their resumes and, and information of that nature. Um, their related work and references, we checked some of their references, um, the strength of their proposed scope of services in relation to what we were looking for. So it was a very rigorous, uh, very defined process. Do you have any clauses that when you hide the top, when you said we're going to sit down with them, I've sat down with people, yep. looked over the plans, and most plans are like behind schedule. Not all of them, but some are. So are there, are there are there clauses in there that if they're behind, they're going to pay for it, not us? Because I've seen situations where we had consultants and they were behind, and we just kept paying them. And eventually, after a while, we didn't get anything. David, so, can I help you well, say this? If you look at the Warren article. I read it. Okay, just, just want to caution you. The article com completed or by December 31st, 2023. Right. So it's not something that's going to be done, you know. And just so you know, the consultant that he referenced, is already doing work for the town of Hampton with Public Works. So this consultant is known to the town. We've worked with this consultant. Um, I, I don't think there's a, from what I see, and I've worked with consultants too, there's not a firm date you can say, but the Warren article states that it has to yeah. be all done. But. What, the answer, right? Yeah. Part of the question I was asking was, he said we'll sit down playing and see if we're on schedule. So my question is, what are you gonna do with the behind schedule? I, I, that should be in the thinking of somewhere. There should be. Right. If you don't build a highway on time, there's penalties for not right. doing something. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I think that that's the point where our town planner right. is the one managing this process. So, you know, I, you know. And the firm will provide, whatever firm submits a proposal, will surely provide a timeline. A timeline, line, sure. of, And we don't sure. know exactly how it's going to no, lay out. Right. So we'll be looking at that. If we see that they're falling behind, we'll let them know so that they don't fall too yep. far behind. What or happens if they do <coughs> fall is my question. I'm, the big dig in Boston was about $2 billion, and then it went to 4 and then it went to 16 Yeah, but this one cap doesn't increase that manner. That's correct. We have a maximum amount under the contract that we're at risk for. It's not like the big dig. Thank There's you. an entire process for evaluating these. I'm sorry to jump in, Jason. No, it's fine. That, that sets out how our fees are handled by town ordinance. Uh, it's a bid process that's very rigorously controlled by law, and then once we have those RFPs for qualified bidders, we evaluate for the the best company to meet our goals based on doing all of our due diligence. I understand that, okay. part, but my point in that was like something like the big anyway. The big dig's thirty two billion when you pay the interest, and then we had the thing with Seabrook. Don't just example that, but every project is like that, and some of the projects that have contingencies have the contingency that. If they fall behind, they're going to take up. If they're not going to charge them, they'll do it on their own response. That's what I'm looking right. for, or something like that. They, we are only appropriating, raising appropriate one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. That's all right. they're going to get. Mm -hmm. Are you you're set now, or do you? Well, if that's all they're going to get for this phase, and they, for this for phase this of phase. development, yep. How many phases are there? This is the plan. I mean, this, this, is, the this plan. is the plan. This so is basically, the we, got, we were able to secure. We were able to secure the funding for the vision and coastal components. This hundred twenty-five thousand dollars is for the rest of the plan. It's all going to be Correct. combined, and it's, you're going to have one product yeah. in the end. So it's not the going to, at the end of this. And actually, the RFP. Right. No, I believe the RFP it. should actually cite the hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. This is what you have to work. That's with. correct. That, that that's the intent here. So. Yep. I know that's the intent. I keep asking the same question. What if they I don't? I'm, hopefully, they could be required. I can't. I can't. Do I don't have a crystal ball. ball. No, hold, 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 hold on. So we're we're yeah. going around the table on this, David. Is, do you have any more questions? I think, in all fairness, I think we, I know what you're asking, but I don't know how much more we can explain 
Well, the pig was saying well, what is it else that we did behind plan and pretend that there we have a town planner and management of this town that's going to work with putting this together. It's no different. Whatever, wherever you're working, they're responsible. I put, right. they've already chosen the vendor, and I put faith in Jason. That's going to be fine. I mean, this is what happens. It's just ask. You'll have, you'll have a contract. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 If they have the contract, it must be. Yeah, we will. Absolutely. That's all I'm asking for. There are going to be stipulations in the contract that if they fall behind, they're going to eat it, not Hampton. That's all I'm concerned no. about. That's it. Mike, uh, last year you kind of got blown out of the water, but you've done your homework, and now you're ready to Absolutely. proceed. For sure. So we should su <coughs> support this and move on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Henderson? Yeah, I fully support this plan. Um, you know, they brought it to fruition. This is a uh, group of, uh, you know, people that were put together, including yourself, who, uh, you know, worked real hard to come to this process that needs to be done. The other process is archaic, as we all know, and it's uh, high time. For the benefits that we're going to gain out of this, it's high time we complete this project. And uh, I appreciate you bringing it back and tightening it up from years previous, and, uh, you know, you have my vote on it. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Henderson. Mr. Brighto. No, they, they brought this forward. They brought it forward with a group of people. They, it wasn't just one person bringing this in. It was a, the whole committee right. that did. And uh, they also got the other part of the grant to help fund That's part correct. of this. So that, that it's, it's not all in the town. So, right. And uh, a lot's changed since 1985. Correct. Yeah, so uh, I fully support this. Thank you, Mr. Brighto. Mrs. Buckley. Uh, no, I have nothing to say except well done, Jason. Thank you. Good luck with them. Ms. Capertis. Um, I just have two questions sure. for you. Um, you're talking about the existing consultant that is currently working on the um, coastal vision plan. They were just awarded that. They yes. were just. Yeah. Um, will there be a new full RFP process for the entire plan? Absolutely. For this for this, for this uh, phase? This for this $125,000 we're asking for, right. there okay. will be for that. So whoever the consultant is, they will team with Malone or Orton McBroom. If they're true, if they're the same, they're the same okay. party. We'll, we'll, but they would. So there'll be a new RFP process for the hundred and twenty. Absolutely, and that's what I was okay. alluding to earlier. In the next over the next couple of months, we're going to be drafting that for okay. release. All right, and then I have one other question. Um, can you explain how the master plan allows the town to qualify for grants and other projects? Absolutely. So I mean, it is. A document that when we apply for grants they obviously well they want to see that you have a current master plan that reflects your community um, if it's older it makes it more challenging if say community a has a plan from 2018 and ours is from 1985 and you're fighting for the same grant and their you know master plan you know talks more specifically about what you know correlates more to what that grant is for by current day uh, needs, they're going to get it, basically. Okay. So it just puts us at a disadvantage by having an older plan. Okay. Um, and then one other short question, <coughs> if it's a long answer, we can talk about it offline. Okay. But the question is, um, how from the last master plan from 1985, how much was actually executed from it? That you, that, or is there, are there tangible things that the town benefited from from the 1985 plan? I would say there were some over time. I've only been here since 2014. Okay. Um, I specifically couldn't tell you right now. I mean, it's, you know, the last chapter update in that plan, I believe, was in 2009, so it was well before my time. Yeah. But, um, so I guess in a way I'm piggybacking a little yeah. bit mm -hmm. off of I think what um, David was trying to yeah. get at is that $125,000, although is cheaper than maybe what you've seen from York and other towns, you know, we want to believe that it's money well spent and, and that yeah. with an updated plan, the town is going to reap the benefit of the work in the, in the money that is spent. Now, the important thing to remember is that the implementation part of it is the most important part of the master plan, and it will have an implementation schedule in there, you know, and, and it's only, you know, as good as, you know, people have to implement it. It can't just collect dust on the shelf, sure. and I can assure you, as long as I'm here, it will be implemented. Okay. I mean, that's, this was my priority when I got here. I'm glad to be in the position we're in right now to, you know, work toward this, and, uh, and it will be used, and it will be updated 
as, over time so that we don't run into the situation of a 30 some odd year old plan again that has Absolutely. very little builds in this monster document and very little use. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Brian, thank you. Mr. LeBranch, just one, yep. one more thing I wanted sure. to mention um, is that once this is done, this will be a tool that can be used to get um, money from grants for things that might be coming up, flooding, stuff like that along Absolutely. the coast. This, without this, it's more difficult to that, get those grants. That was the point that I was trying to make. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, this, yeah. 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 with this, it just, you, it's a piece, you need this. So right. especially nowadays, and especially with, you know, being a coastal town, this is extremely important. Absolutely. And, and the other thing I just want to mention real quick is that going back again to last year, you might remember um, one, there was one member that said, well, what is this? What do you need this 30000 for? Is this to plant, remember it was, is this to make us a plan to make, to do a plan? Remember yeah. that conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it didn't pass. So what you did was you basically got members from different various boards in this town, and you did that very thing. You brought it to the next level. This is the next level. And this, the cost of this compared to what we were presented with last year is this is extremely good. So well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Morrow. This master plan is for all of Hampton. That's correct. In your thinking that what you're doing, how much of it includes like the the, uh, the sanitation, which was voted in, and I think we would thought it might cost us $32 million in the future, but we've set aside money. So does it contain stuff of that nature also? Sure. I mean, I mean, there is, there are elements of the plan that involve utilities and infrastructure and things of that nature. So those are topics that will certainly be covered in the plan amongst other things as well. So it's going to, it's comprehensive is the word. I mean, it's a comprehensive plan. It, you know, it covers recreation, housing, yeah, infrastructure in the community, um, anything of that's of importance. <coughs> the sanitation, the presentation, and that big binder we looked at, it's in a dire state of dire need. Right. There's no question about that. And we voted a lot of money in for the phase one. Mm -hmm. So would you also be like the master plan over some of those to ensure that that's going along? Yeah, we would, we would want the consultant to take a look at any existing plans such as that to make sure that they're incorporating the, the things that we're working on now and the things that are important to the community. So it's, they're not just going to be pulling it out of the blue. They're going to be hearing from the community. They're going to be looking at plans that we have on file now. They're going to be utilizing that information. So, so it's going to go over all the department heads and co It's going to overlap, absolutely. There's a <coughs> total department involvement. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'll accept the motion to move to the public hearing on June, January 16th, the sum of 125000 for Article 10. Do I have a motion to move there? I'll make the motion. Moved by Mr. Henderson, seconded by Mr. Bridal. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Eight in favor? And of course, Mrs. Bridal Russell is absent, but great job. Thank you. We'll Thank see you, you on the, uh, well, I'll see you the 15th. Absolutely. Anyway. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. Great Thanks, questions. Jason. Thank you. The second, we're going to skip over the second one. We're going to go right to the third one on page, on your copy. It says pages <coughs> 6 of 16. Uh, invite to the table Jamie Sauer, our te deputy town manager. But before we have Jamie speak, in the audience tonight is Jed Carpentier from our fire department, special firefighters, uh, 2664 and uh, 3019, our basic. Nope. They, they changed and merged into one unit. So, so it's just 264, but you still yep. have to have two separate. Two separate contracts. Yeah. Jed, did you want to say any quick comments before uh, we review this? Because I know you spoke at the uh, selectmen's meeting, and I wanted to offer you the same opportunity if you'd like. Um, it's a little out of order to be speaking at this uh, We've had people speak here before, so. <clears throat> well, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be before all of you tonight. I didn't really prepare any official That's remarks, okay. but uh, I'll um, echo what I said a couple weeks ago at the selectmen's meeting. Um, the process this time around was a civil process. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. A civil process, and thank you to the, to the team that uh, Mr. Sullivan and the town prepared. Um, uh, I think it's uh, a modest contract move that keeps the, our department and our people 
um, in a position to continue to attract quality candidates um, as we go forward in a uh, in a very competitive job market. So um, I uh, come to you guys tonight and ask for support of each of you um, in support of the two contracts that will be before you tonight. One is for the firefighters and the fire alarm operators, and the other one is a separate agreement that covers um, the supervisors and the secretary positions within the department. So um, if there's any questions, I'm available for those either now or offline afterwards. Um, some of you have my contact information. If not, Mr. Warburton has that and can uh, pass that out to anybody who would like to reach out on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But uh, thank you in advance for a vote of your support. I know the voters look to both of the boards um, for their guidance as far as what they should be voting for. And I think a unanimous vote from you guys would go a long way to uh, passing these contracts. So thank you in advance. Thank you, Jed. I'll turn it over to uh, Jamie Solomon at this time to <coughs> help negotiate the contracts. Jamie, you want to give us a quick review of both? Sure. Um, if it's all right with you, Mr. Chairman, should I do, I'll do an overview of, of sort of this. I know there's some new members and some folks at home of how we get right to where we are. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. So what you'll have before you is uh, there's two foreign articles that have certain cost items. The cost items you see in here are those negotiated between the two parties, um, the Board of Selectmen, uh, authorized a team of folks, uh, myself, the town attorney, uh, and, and uh, one of the selectmen sat on that. <coughs> Pardon me. And then a team from the firefighters. Something new in these contracts uh, that the chairman noticed is that um, the bargaining unit merged. There used to be there's two, still two contracts, as Jed indicated, but that bargaining unit is overseen by one, very much like the police. The HPA oversees, uh, represents both contracts, the members. So that was something new this year. Um, it, it's great to work with these folks. We've been doing this for a number of years now, and I think we've got a very good rapport with our employees. It's a very respectful back and forth. We both, rep, both represent our interests, I think, well. Um, we, we feel the goals that the board set for us, for our team, we met. Um, and I think it's a very good contract before you. So again, the items that you see in the warrant articles represent those cost items above those already within the current budget. Um, so anything that's a cost item has to go in and be ratified by the town at the town meeting. Um, items that are non-cost items, language issues, and we've got a number of language issues we've cleaned up in these contracts, don't necessarily have to be a part of this. So that's what the Warren article is. Um, each of the contracts, quick overview of both, um, it's a 2.8, 2.8, 2.8 for each of the three years. There are in the officer's contract two positions which got a uh, salary adjustment rather than that 2.8 in the first year. That is the deputy chief and uh, the uh, fire prevention secretary. Uh, those would bring those more in line with their peer groups and others within the community. That will be their their increase for the first year, and then they will fall in line with the 2.8, 2.8 in the subsequent years. Additionally, the other cost items, uh, these are all online. They can be looked at by the public or any folks anytime you like. Uh, we made some changes to uh, language. Again, I, unless you have specific questions, I don't necessarily want to go over those. I'll talk about the cost items. Uh, the 2.8 is the annual. Uh, within the uh, firefighters uh, agreement, we made a couple of other changes that impact costs. One has to do with an education incentive. Um, throughout many of our contracts, there's an education incentive. We made an adjustment in that for the firefighters with regard to those who have bachelor's degrees which will give them, uh, there used to be language that said the bachelor's degree or associate's degree had to be job related. Um, we had some discussions uh, because th there are certain folks with bachelor's degrees that really we felt should be included. So we made that adjustment. And folks with a bachelor's degree in biology, folks with bachelor's de degrees in other areas that are, well, not traditionally a firefighting degree or what have you, certainly helps out with their paramedics degrees or what have you. So that change was made. Uh, it's. The associates has to be job related. Any bachelor's degree qualifies for that stipend in the future. Uh, additionally, we made a change to the uniform allowance. Uh, now that uh, when a firefighter comes off of probation, uh, they'll get a class A uniform that the town will purchase. The class A is the dress uniform that we see them when they go to funerals, wakes, or other town of functions. Um, that'll be a new, relatively small, but a new cost that gets added. Um, additionally, in the uh, supervisor's contract, when they get promoted to um, lieutenant, captain, deputy chief, it's a different class A, so we'll purchase that in the insignia to go with one. Um, uh, let's see what else. I think that is all for the cost items in both of these contracts. 
I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that the committee has. Hold on one sec, uh, Mr. Sullivan, before yes, we sir. go around the table, uh, you might have noticed this, but on the Article 17 uh, Fire Department Supervisory, on the first line it says 2010 instead of 2020. Right, Got it. Thank you. <laughs> so, Jamie, thank you. Um, and Jamie has explained, let me get to you in a second. So, Jamie has explained um, the two warrant mm -hmm. articles. Uh, just for the viewers at home before we go around the table. So we're asking the voters to approve, raise and appropriate $87,623 for the current fiscal year, which will be obviously what we'll be voting on uh, in March. Such sum representing additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits. That's for the Firefighters Association, as, as Jen so excellently explained, uh, that group. Fire Department Supervisory Association, um, both the cost items include the collective bargaining between the Hampton Board of Selectmen, Hampton Fire Department, Supervisory Association, affiliated with the Hampton Professional Firefighters, Local 2664, estimated increase over the previous year. It states it there, so 31742 for that. Pretty straightforward uh, for cost items, and that's why we have they have to come before the Selectmen, the Budget Committee, deliver a session to the voters, because it includes cost, in this case, over several years. Mr. LeBranch? Um, to the to the best fire department in the world, <laughs> you have my support 100% on both of these articles. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you, Mr. LeBranch. Mr. Morrow. Could you just please explain to me, I'm interpreting that 2020, it's going to be a total increase with all the percentages you talked about, it will be a total of 87,623, correct? Correct, yeah. For the firefighters contract. 39 weeks. April and then 1st. And then it goes 52 weeks, right. which means a full year in 52. Why is the 2313? Contracts week? expire on right. April 1st, so they begin and end on so yeah. the 31st of March or April 1. So the contract that we're currently under expires on, on the 31st of April. So the April 1 is the date of new. That's why for 2020, there's 39 weeks from that date on. Mm -hmm. And then on the 2023, the final year, there's the 13 weeks, mm -hmm. much like we're in right now, that gap period. Right. So it's 87000 for everybody in the fire department in 2020. And then the following year, it's going to be 118 correct. additional, and then another 125, and then the 29. Yeah. Thank correct. And again, for the firefighters, the supervisors in their group is additionally, that's a separate contract. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Mr. Pluff. All set. Mr. Henderson. Yeah, a couple things here. So 2.8, 2.8, 2.8. And then uh, for the vouchers degree, and say, what is the stipend on that? What's so that? theirs attaches to um, stipends within the contract as they reach certain milestones. Yeah, for example, this one is this firefighter, I believe, one, two, three, and then there's a firefighter specialist that's fourth. It's a little different than the PD. So what this would do is help them achieve that firefighter specialist. They've got to get those others. Then they go to firefighter specialist. Essentially, it will account for a 1% increase off of their base. Okay. Yeah, I believe that, uh, you know, what Steve said, we have one of the best, if not the best, uh, that I've ever known for a fire department. They're very professional, very trained. They do a tremendous job. I've seen them save a lot of lives over the years. Um, they all show up to work. Uh, they do a great job. They get a smile on their face. They do great things. Um, the 2.8, we have to look at that number. Some people go, oh, my God, you know, 2.8 seems a little high. But you have to look at the big picture. Last year... We gave the police similar, so we're kind of falling in line with the with the same uh, what we've done for the other groups. So, 2.8. I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with uh, the firefighters getting uh, what they should get because they're very professional. They're hard work, and I know you mentioned the uh, the deputy chief. The deputy chief's position was way underpaid for uh, the position he has. Uh, sometimes. You know, I'll look at a deputy chief on this department, and deputy chief here with our fire department, and our deputy chief was way under where he should be. So the uh, increase he got was only like 6% or something the first year. That, that, that's accurate. It was and, like 87 uh, you know, and change to 95. Is what and that doesn't even bring him up to, uh, you know, where some of the others are that are, you know, at the same By the platform. end of the contract, it will, but yes, you're right. And uh, the deputy chief uh, certainly does a tremendous amount of work. He's hard work and he's dedicated. Um, so... Got 100% support from myself on, the, on these contracts. Thank you, Mr. Henderson, and thank you for all the great work you've done through the years. And we worked together years ago when you negotiated for the Hampton Police Department. Mr. Bridal? Uh, no, it's a, a, it a good negotiations. Um, and as you, if you heard last night, Mary Louise read a couple of yes. 
Oh, yeah. others, and we get those all the time from the fire department, or about the fire department and uh, the, the good work they always do. So uh, I got no problem. Mr. Bridal, thank you. Mrs. Buckley? Uh, no. I have nothing to say except thanks for all you do. Ms. Capertis. Just two quick questions. Yes, um, with, these, uh, with this approval, um, would the townspeople yeah. not expect to see a warrant article for, for the fire association? until 2023 correct again yes and that would be true for article 17 as well mm -hmm. that's correct okay yes. um and then are there any provisions in any of this um that um allows for new hires or funds for new hires because i think i've been under the assumption that you that we're kind of understaffed so for you're saying our for size. additional bodies yeah no this is uh, funding the Correct. existing yeah. and the positions, but okay. as far as new bodies, no, that's yeah. not addressed here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excellent questions. I, I want to make a final comment before I look for a motion. Um, I'm proud to support these contracts as, as I have in this community for 40 years. Uh, every employee, and I know Mr. Sullivan remembers when he we started around the same time, I mean, his public service when Jamie came to town. Um, it's interesting to note uh, and Jed said something very interesting. It made me think even more for this time around about competitive wages. You know, a lot of the firefighters that are here now and some that have just retired or people who have been on the department have lived here for many years. They bought their homes years ago. A lot of the firefighters in this community and elsewhere are traveling to work. And so the, the competitive aspect, I think, is even more important. And you alluded to it one night even on future employment of people who want to work in Hampton. The importance to that is we pay a lot of money and we proudly pay a lot of money for our firefighters to go to school. They are absolutely exemplary. I, I could go on, as Mr. Henderson alluded and Mr. Bridal, we could talk forever because they just do an outstanding job. This is the right thing to do. Um, we have the most qualified people. And I, I have a nephew who's been a Manchester firefighter for 21 years, and he'll, the reputation over here is, is unbelievable. And so, and around New England and, and basically throughout the country, I, I applaud this effort very much. Uh, I think it's a great thing, and I'm, I'm thrilled to say that, you know, keeping qualified people and hiring qualified people and people who are so cohesive um, these guys work so much together, not even during work, but just other things they do outside of work in their communities and Hampton, this, of course, being the major one. But I, I endorse these wholeheartedly, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Carpentier, and the uh, men and women of the Hampton Fire Department. Do I have a motion to move to the public hearing? We'll do one uh, each separate. The uh, 87,623 for Article 16, moved Mrs. by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor? Unanimous. I have a motion to accept to public hearing the number 31,742 for the Fire Department Supervisory so, Association, second. moved by Mr. Branch, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have one more out of order, if I may ask the indulgence of the Budget Committee. Uh, I see an old friend in the audience tonight, and I had a... I had a handwritten note. Uh, Mr. Nevins is out there. We'd like to invite him up. Uh, Chris, if you want to come up, which if I ask everybody to go to Article 45, uh, the bronze flag holes, it's, it's basically the last page of the printouts that uh, Christy has given us. I think Chris wanted to, to give us a, a, a short presentation or explain this. Chris, welcome, former state rep, Chris Nevins, and I know you felt pretty bad about Kate Pratt as well. And Very uh, much so, and I thank you very much for bringing that up. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more about this wonderful lady, and uh, I've known her for years, and uh, we're going to miss her very much. Well, we miss you, too. You represent our community very well, Chris. So go ahead if uh, you could. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Chairman Warburton. I appreciate that. And uh, ladies and gentlemen of uh, the Budget Committee, thanks for uh, uh, getting me on a little bit early. I appreciate uh, that very much. I mean, it, uh, for those of you who are members last year, this is going to look very familiar. Uh, it's almost exactly the same, uh, to be sure, about the uh, cemetery markets for veterans at our cemeteries here in Hampton. In the past, uh, I think. Uh, we have been the American Legion, uh, and that's why you see the name of Burke Bennett on the top there. He's our commander, so, uh, but the, and he's obviously the one who has asked for this, but uh, can I assure you that all the members from who we've spoken to certainly agree with it. 
uh, in the past, we've had uh, the town kind enough to pay for the markers and for the flags that go on uh, veterans' uh, graves. Uh, the money was removed a couple of years ago, and of course, uh, the article last year sought to uh, bring it back. Uh, the article did fail. Uh, and we were a little bit surprised, but uh, then uh, again, perhaps we just assumed too much or, or just didn't give it as much thought. So. We thought we'd educate a little bit more and uh, speak not only here to the budget committee, but uh, do what we need for people to understand. Because when we did talk to some people about not voting, they truly didn't understand uh, what it was all about. And it's a very, very simple bill. Um, the history of uh, markers comes with the American Legion. And uh, we the name of American Legion Post 35 is the American Legion Post 35, the Hamptons. So that doesn't only include us, it includes Northampton. Hampton Falls, and uh, we have members uh, from Stratum and have worked with Stratum uh, and uh, Epping and a, and a few other places for different things. Uh, we have received those funds, and uh, if, you, if you look at the amount, $6,500, that basically represents getting 200 markers. And the reason we have set that number is that we are actually behind now. Uh, when we were able to uh, receive the money uh, a couple of years ago for the markers. We would keep up every year. Uh, we would ask the town, oh, by the way, the town still does reimburses for flags, which we're very grateful That's for. Correct. Very grateful for that. Uh, so let's say that year we used 15 markers or 20 markers, 25 markers. Uh, we would, uh, quote, invoice the town. Never had a problem uh, being paid uh, for that in the flags, and uh, that took care of that year and did that every year. We're now at the point, though, that we're starting to fall behind a little bit on our markers, and so we're a little bit more concerned. Just as a note, the other towns that I mentioned, the procedure is a little bit different. Um, they, uh, Hampton Falls and uh, Northampton basically uh, do what we did. That is, we invoice, they request a certain amount of markers, we invoice it, uh, and again, at 15 or 20 a year, perhaps at the most, uh, and uh, we're reimbursed, and it's never been an issue. Stratum, I guess, uh, went behind several years ago, and they asked for the 200 so that they could catch up, and now they have caught up and have extras. So we're at a point now that, and we know that there was nothing malicious about anything, uh, that uh, the town of Hampton has been so good to their veterans, and we're very grateful for uh, what the town does to us. Uh, all we have to do is go to any Veterans Day ceremony uh, or Memorial Day ceremony, and uh, the town turns out. And uh, we are very grateful for that, and that makes us feel good. We know we belong to a town uh, that uh, respects uh, our veterans. Uh, I was good enough when I, the, uh, uh, with, when I went to see Fred Welsh uh, to talk about this initially, just to find out what's the best way to make this work. Uh, he has a history, and I asked for it, and he gave me a history of uh, uh, veterans and the wars that uh, veterans have fought from the town of Hampton over our history. And my own memory goes back, I, I would say, uh, well, the French and Indian War will start there, but it, that's not the start of our history at all. As most of you know, it's the 1600s, and the Indians and, and, and much of that, that we have veterans that have fought uh, maybe 20, maybe 30, maybe 40 at these skirmishes. Uh, but that's the kind of history we have that goes back to just after our founding, uh, right up now to uh, the Middle East. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's a history. I don't want to go on too long, but I, I would, uh, I, because I know how much uh, Hampton cares for veterans, we, we are asking uh, the voters to once again reconsider and vote the $6,500, which we would use to purchase in the vicinity of 200 markers. The, the true answer of how many markers will be, how much we can get it at what cost. If we can buy it at a large amount like that, we'll probably get a discount. We've already done the research on that. Uh, but it would be right in that area, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to catch up and, uh, and use the Boy Scouts again, as we have in the past, ourselves, uh, any other social group. We've had uh, some boys from uh, one of our churches said, how can we help the veterans? What can we do? And, uh, you know, what project can we do? And this is one that we would definitely use them with. Chris, thank you. Before I go around the table, I, I just for the public at home, so we're asking $6,500 to reimburse the American Legion Post 75. Explain the number 200. 
Why isn't it 500? Why, so 200 bronze service flag holder grave markers. Well, it, basically, that's a catch-up number. A catch-up. So okay. that's right, because we've We're behind now. That, uh, okay. All right. Before, okay. if I said we had 25 or 30 on a, every year that oh, we would okay. pick and that's, get reimbursed, right. that worked. Uh, but now it doesn't work. Now, it is probably also uh, not only behind, we're behind some, but we're probably not behind 200. Uh, the one who keeps the records, uh, John Barvenick uh, of Northampton, uh, you know, is not here tonight, but uh, we've had great discussions. And uh, so I would say we would be very much like Stratum. We would have be able to catch up and have some for a year or two where we don't have to ask for more money uh, or. So yeah, how are the prior markers, when you say playing catch-up, how are the prior markers taken care of money-wise? Before How were they to pass? It was paid by the town. Paid by the town? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Again, we invoiced, and uh, okay. it was just never an issue. And the only other question, I'm going to give, go around the table, but I think it's one of the things that occurred to me was, so these markers, when they get taken up, right, right and, and for someone who's dealt with volunteers around the state, and they're all well-intentioned, yes. you, know, you know, and I'm hearing all these volunteers in parks and all this, I understand about volunteers. They're great. But then we have a situation where, you know, my question to you is, on the, after Memorial Day weekend or July 4th, those types of things, is there a written plan that if the ta taxpayers are going to pay for these, you know, who is in, ch in charge, so to speak, to make sure that these are kept uh, under... Down. We've always taken the post, and again, I'll go back to John Barbenick, who has done yep. so much for our post, uh, has always done that in the past. Uh, he's got the best information. Uh, well, he's educated me, I can assure you. Uh, and uh, so is there a written plan? No. No, it's probably not. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, there have been a lot of changes in the last uh, few years on how we run the post. And yes. uh, I you know, I'm going to say I think there are many positive changes. Uh, okay. We try to get more involved in what we do. Uh, we just, it's not just helping veterans, but helping the town's people, uh, giving scholarships, encouraging the kids yep. in high school to, uh, you know, give their speeches and whatnot. So, uh, there's a lot that we do. Good. We'll start over on this end. Ms. Capriz. Thank you. Um, so, is it my understanding that the markers get um, pulled up after Memorial Day and replaced on Labor Day, or do they remain a marker at the great it's supposed to remain, but if there if the cemetery needs to cut or do right. something to that around it, it would probably be pulled up, but it should be replaced. And pull it up, cut if you need to, right. and replace it. So the answer is, do some get lost? The answer is yes. Um, are, do they all get lost? No. Uh, and uh, I guess our concern now is not only the lost ones, but we have uh, veterans who've passed the last couple of years mm -hmm. that we still haven't marked, okay. and would like to get marked. In the 200 um, that you're requesting with this article, um, is it um, just for Hampton veterans, or is it for any veteran that is recognized by your post? Uh, it's Well, it's just for Hampton veterans. It's veterans buried in Hampton so, cemeteries. It, right, okay. let, me, let me put right. it that way. Okay. Uh, yes, it's only for the Hampton cemeteries. But so again, Northampton, uh, Hampton Falls, they have their own cemeteries and they handle it and themselves. They, right. They through us, they handle their own cemeteries. Okay. And I'm not talking about maintenance. I'm talking about this particular <coughs> issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, have there been any fundraising? Um, any any fundraising that is done by the American Legion for this purpose? We do a lot of fundraising. Uh, the answer for this purpose is no, uh, and that's because the town has always done it for us in the past. Uh, that might be, if we if this failed again, uh, I think that's where we would go, because we wouldn't give up on uh, marking, marking these particular course. graves. Uh, we would try our best, but it's it's really hard sometimes uh, when you to go to our, I mean, we're, we're glad to do it, and there are a lot of, as, as I said, we're always well supported by this town. But to walk up, and I hate to use the word beg for money from a business or something like that, but we'll, we've done it mm -hmm. in the past, but we're, we're not doing it as much now. We're getting income from charitable gaming uh, down at the mm -hmm. casino. That's something new for us, uh, and that's very helpful. We uh, uh, go out to the track, and uh, uh, we uh, the hamburgers, hot dogs for sure. people up at the uh, Epping track. We do whatever we yeah. can and go where yeah. we can. 
you may see us down at the beach when uh, we have events for the, the fall and run for the fall and, uh, and then surfing for the fall and then we, we do those kind of things. So, right. Uh, but specifically, uh, do we have a written plan? The answer is no, and I, I'm going to suggest that. And uh, the second one is uh, that uh, it's all Hampton okay. uh, people. And the town currently reimburses the Legion for flags, That's but correct. not for the marker. That's, That's correct. Okay, thank you. Mr. Compares, no, no, no. excellent question. Mrs. Buckley? I just want you to know, when did the town stop paying for the markers? Uh, I can't. Uh, we, I was told by John just about two years ago. Oh, okay. uh, so it's not not long. Maybe uh, <coughs> it's about two years. I was just curious. Yeah, that's an excellent question, time. Mr. Walsh. Do we know why it was stopped? <laughs> it's not part of the appropriation. The appropriation, <coughs> excuse me, was for flags. And uh, about two years ago, we started getting <coughs> on the bill markers, oh. and it far exceeded the appropriation. And it wasn't part of the appropriation that was presented to the town, so we didn't pay them. Oh, okay. That's why it's here right. now, because they really need to be marked. Right. Okay. That's we spent a lot of money on those flags. <laughs> oh, yes. They, yep. they need not to be stuck in the ground, right. because no, they understood. deteriorate very quickly. Understood. I'll ask you then. Um, don't, isn't there a, um, a supplemental fund in the budget? Maybe I can ask Christy. Like, isn't there... Well, you're, are you referring to the cemetery burial trust? No, no, no. I'm actually just talking about. Isn't there? Are you talking about the patriotic purposes? Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, there isn't is, there something else in the budget? There is, but that deals with the flags on like our flag post throughout town. It's marketed to deal that level, not and this cost. Oh, and the flags are there, but not. Is that what you Well, or can I ask Christy a question? Yeah. Oh, go right so, ahead. So, Christy, remember when you and I, when I first came to you after I, I was elected and you reviewed the budget with me, and I think there was like a final line item, and I'm going to call it slush, but it's I'm using the wrong, I'm using the wrong word. So, um, I thought that there's sort of a, is it 3% or is there a, a number that's in the budget that, is it always that isn't always used? No. The, an, the answer is no. There is no contingency appropriation within the budget. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And the only thing that I can think of is a patriotic purpose line that Fred's referring to. It only has two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars on it and it pays right. for the flags at the cemetery plus the flags around town, like Jamie um alluded to. So Maybe the you maybe you're talking about the unassigned fund balance? Yes, yeah. thank you. Oh, yes. I was going oh, yeah, to well, that And we can't use that. that. No. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. And, that's and what I thing, meant. Yeah, no, that's good. And the thing I was a little too, <laughs> Jamie, don't mind me asking this, but you know when I talk about putting things up and taking them down, you still do the flag? I, I don't. We, we handed that over to the Boy Scouts. For okay, because so. for years you did a great, I mean, yeah. they always would put up and they would take it down. So that's the point I was saying about if we have situations, Chris, where they have to be moved, whatever, as long as, uh, so Mrs. Buck, was that question answered? Or? It was answered. Mr. Bridal? No, having many uh, veterans buried in the cemeteries in this town, uh, <laughs> I think uh, this town has always done a good job for its veterans and I think we ought to continue. So, Mr. Henderson? Yeah, quick one. So you say when these are taken up, they are we put over at the um, post thirty five. Uh, Is that normal, or do they put them in one of the outbuildings over at the cemetery? I really don't know the answer to that okay. question. I have never seen them in the post, uh, and we store downstairs. I don't know how to answer that question. Okay. So. They're not normally taken up unless some repair work no, has to be done in that particular grave site, and yeah. when the repair work is done, they're put back. Okay. Like everything with these type of uh, things, they don't last forever. We hey, we live in New England. We live right by the beach. Salt air, they break down. You know, they could get broken down just, you know, normal wear and tear. So I am in full support of uh, trying to uh, bring this up and take care of our veterans. I'm huge and with the veterans. So Mr. Plum, take care of it. Fred, Fred should this be, uh, obviously 200 is a, is it the right number for year to year to year? Should there be a that article for the flags? I don't know how that got there. Somebody obviously voted it sometime way back to pay for the flags. The the appropriation you're yeah, talking about right. <clears throat> comes under uh, the regular budget line item is prepared to the state. It's called patriotic purposes. Right. Yeah. yeah. 
what's happened is over the years, uh, the cost of flags has, um, shall we say, increased uh, substantially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I can remember doing this many years ago, and you know, flags were 15, 20 cents a piece yeah. that you put on these graves. Right. And now they're two dollars and fifty cents to five dollars, depending upon the flag and the make. The right. make. So right. they've gone up substantially. We spend several thousand dollars a year providing those flags, but nobody has actually ever put in the money for to these particular that. markers. I know yeah. on my father's grave, I had to buy my own. Yeah. I suspect when I put it on my grave, I'll have to buy my own too. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is there some way to ch change that so that it includes a few. We just have two <coughs> subline items, and we just we do flags and we do markers well, under we the same appropriation, but there'll be there'll be a larger appropriation request. Yeah. Well, that's so that's where that should go. It should it should yeah. go there, but should. it has never gone there. Well, let's get it there. Actually, <laughs> come back. I think if you solve this problem with the two hundred, it's yeah. going to solve it for a while. Yeah. And that will give you another year to prepare a budget that has that material in it. <coughs> to be able to put that in. They need to request it? No, to I think the between the select one and the budget committee, select that can be taken care of. Good. That answers that. Mr. Mar, I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, the, if it was 10000 or 20000 my answer is I want to do it. The veterans who have sacrificed, I, there's no better thing we can talk about here all day, all night. Mr. Little Branch, I guess I'm going to be the only Grinch. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I've got to be, I'm going to tell you the same thing I did last year, okay? I think that um, what Joyce said about fundraisers, I'm sorry, but that's the way I feel. I don't think that the, you should be coming before the taxpayers of Hampton with your hand out. I think that if you came to me with your hand out, I'd be the first one to give you a donation, okay? So I see that the American Legion should be uh, fundraising and buy what they can each year so that if they needed 20 or 30 uh, one or two years ago, they'd be keeping up with it on a regular basis. I just don't think that, sorry, I can't support this. And please, no disrespect meant for anybody, okay? Because believe me, the veterans in this country are they deserve the very best, but I just think with your organization, it's a nonprofit, correct? Um, it's correct. Okay, I, I belong to different things before, and we used to do fundraising, and we would raise money, and I just think that's the way that this should go. So, thank you, Mr. LeBranch. Mrs. Buckley. I just wanted to say I totally disagree with you. I think you have every right to come to the people of Hampton, who's um, our children, whose brothers and sisters and Family members are buried there, and I totally disagree, and I hope this passes by you. I think it's very important. Let me tell you the dilemma I have, and to my good longtime friend on my right, which I actually agree with what you just said, but I, I'm not gonna, I don't think we should wait. Everybody in this room, and everybody in this community, and everybody in this country, and everybody in this world, me being one of them, appreciates our veterans so much. Well, if that's the case, why isn't the money in the budget? Right. See, this shouldn't be a lesion problem. And I think this, to Mr. LeBranch's point, I, I, I understand what Steve's saying. Because what happens, and through, through no fault of Mr. Nevis, who I have had the highest esteem for the Nevis family, what happens if another group comes and we all emotionally and whatever love what they do and this and that, and I, I think part of the reasons it didn't pass last year and everybody could debate it, is because of things like this. I even believe more based on the excellent questions. Joyce, you're hitting things right on the note here. I, I'm ready to make a motion to add $6,500 to the budget. And if next year we don't need it, then that subline item goes down to $3. Because what does that do? It, to me, it shows more of a community support. Instead of saying to the Legion, we want you to do a Warren article, the cemetery is part of our operating budget. This is something that occurs in the cemetery. Um, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we, um, I, I, well, let me just say this. Um, 
I'd like to do away with the barn article. I'd like to make a motion to put the $6,500. I feel very confident about the budget this year. I really do. Mr. Welch has done an unbelievable job. He did what we asked him to do. And he sliced, 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 and did a great job. Why don't we put 6500 I think that sends even a stronger message to what you said. We all love the veterans. Why are we taking the chance that it may not pass again? Does anybody agree with me on that? Or? I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm fine. fine with it. Okay, so let's, uh, Christy. For patriotic purposes. For patriotic yeah. purposes. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Welch. Put it in the cemetery budget. They'll maintain them. They'll purchase them. They'll That's put them in place. Where yes. That's where we're going to put it. That's where it belongs. Okay. I'll have a motion from Mr. LeBranch okay. to put it in the cemetery, cemetery budget, $6,500 okay. for 2020 for uh, Marcus, and I'll second seconded it. by Ms. Scopernus. Any okay. further discussion? I'm good with that. All those in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Thank okay. you. And that way, next year, Chris, the managers can work with you and say, okay, you may not need as many because this is something... God willing, would veterans pass away? We, we shouldn't have to have a great guy like you come to us do that. I, do you agree this is a proper way? Do you feel better now? We feel, feel a lot better, and so will everybody else. But we know that. And please, no, I'm, no and the thing that's is, what committees are for is to have exactly. questions. And the thing is, is that the, this, yeah. will be, this will be done with the cemetery trustees, the cemetery budget, and that's just where it belongs. Right. Okay. So thank thank you. Question, uh, thank Mr. You. Sullivan and Mr. Welch from Mr. Bridal regarding the just Mr. This is a citizen's petition. Warrant, they'll, have right? to, they'll have to request to remove it. They'll have to right. request to yes. remove the citizen's petition. That's why I just want to make sure thank that we have it right. Chris, so can we have you get with those petitioners to remove yeah, it before public to. hearing? Yeah. Uh, uh, Brett yeah. Bennett, uh, yeah. 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 Berkeley Bennett will have to be. I actually feel better, and based, Stephen, actually based on your great comments and Mr. Plops and others, I think this is the best way to do the best it. solution. I really I, do. You'll yeah, have to have him request right. that that right. warrant article be pulled. Does he have right. to have the signatures of everybody that signed it? Just the petitioner, right, Fred? Uh, the petitioner is the person you want to you want to go to, right. Mark Bennett. So Mr. Bennett, uh, the right. commander, is the petitioner. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we have it right so that it's not. Yeah. Yeah, we want to get it right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Wilson. Have a good night. Thank so we're going to do, just so that you know, the bottom line, because we have another change is going to be done at the end of the meeting, because we have the 33,000 uh, to change to. Chris, thank you. Chris, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Take care. Good night, Eileen and family. So, good solution. Thank you. Yeah, I, great job, team. Uh, I think this is a great, this, I th I'm so happy with this. Let's go, uh, we now invite up to the table, they're still here, <laughs> our Public Works Director Chris Jacobs, our Deputy Public Works Director Jen Hale, who I think this is their 400th meeting of the year, <laughs> and it's only January, but... Um, we're going to start, go back to page two. Great teamwork on that. I'm so proud. I, I really believe this is a great way to go. So, asset management for wastewater assets. Uh, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 to assist the Department of Public Works in the continued advancement for the town's asset management program for wastewater assets? Set appropriation to be offset by $30,000 in principal loan forgiveness under the New Hampshire Department of DES Clean Water State Revolving Fund, SRF, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for contract for accept and expend any federal, state, or other available funds towards the projects in accordance with the terms and conditions under which they are received and to borrow in anticipation of the receipt of such and or issuance of such bonds or notes as provided in the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize participation in the state revolving fund, RSA 48-6-14, established for the purpose, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to accept and expense, expense such monies as become available from the federal and state governments. Again, shall not last until the project is completed or by March 31st, 2022. Uh, Mrs. Hale, do you want to add to the comments? All I can tell you is that uh, this is a continuation of what we did, I believe, two years ago yeah. that has been probably one of the best, no pun intended, assets to the department uh, as far as our inventory, uh, planning, pre-planning, programming, looking at future capital costs. Uh, we did this with our horizontal <coughs> assets for our drainage system. Uh, we're using it as a work order system. What this will do is it will take our vertical assets. So we'll look to get pump stations and 
other vertical components of our sewer system uh, into our asset management program. Good. And it, this money, again, as it said, it's all, uh, we take out the loan, that's why it has all the loan and language, and then we get the money back from the state. Sounds like a no-brainer, Mr. LeBranch. I would say that, yeah, I'm on, on board with that. Mr. Mara? Yes. Mr. Plum? Yeah. Mr. Henderson? All set. Mr. Bridal? Yes. Mrs. Buckley? Yes. Ms. Copernus? I just have a question. What <laughs> exactly is this? Oh, no, that's right. You, you had 20 more to go. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, what is, what, is, what, is, what is it? When you say it's an asset management, what is so it? So we use a program called People GIS. Okay. So, so it's, it's a computers. computer program. Okay. It's all <coughs> done. Okay. Um, Thank you. Way. It's just a computer program. Yes. Okay, great. Thank great. you. Great. Thank you, Mr. No Chris. I accept a motion I'll to make move that motion up with moved by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Pluff, to move the sum of $30,000 to public hearing on January 16th. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, unanimous. Thank you. We now go to page seven. Well, it's not listed as page. It's the, uh, it's the page after the firefighters yeah. contract. Just so that you know, in watching the meeting last evening, um, and I know that Mr. Jacob, Mrs. Hale will express this, but um, I think I'm correct in saying this is already money. This is not going to be any tax impact. We've already approved this, right? So what this is, is this is a Warren article uh, authorizing the additional funding needed okay. to pay for trash and recycling. The additional funding over That is above. not in the budget that oh, okay. was made by this department. So we need okay. 425,000 for 2020. Yes. We need uh, 198,000 for 2021, 24,000 and change 2022, and 25,000 2023. So this is in addition to, so we need to raise and appropriate uh, the sum of $425,127 to cover the increases in contract costs for those services for the second half of 2020 over the 2020 budget amount, which is already in the operating budget of 615,659, and I think we all know why, cost, 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 yeah. uh, right, John? I mean, Correct. Did anybody want to discuss this? Do you have any comments? You talk about just, this is just like cost of living, but they're ex excessive. That we, right. we go through all the parties. Yeah, And, and well, they're charging and us these monies, true. period. Yeah, I mean, the public should be aware that, uh, for instance, on regular household waste that we throw away, we're moving from $66 a ton to $77 a That's ton. That's a big wow. Okay. Um, we've been paying previously only about $37 a ton for recycling this yeah. last year. We're going to 125 a ton. Plus, on top of that, if we have excess contamination, we pay a penalty fee for excess contamination. I thought we may ask a question. You said the paying. Because when you come into Hampton, it says we recycle, which is great. Well, I recycle. Yeah, right I thought we got kind of paid we for did. giving them this stuff. A long, long, long time ago. Yeah. So that's, that's <laughs> three years ago, the market value fell China. right now. So right now, a mixed ton of recycling only generates for waste management or anybody who handles it about twelve or thirteen dollars, and it's and it used to be three hundred. Over the last five years, it has precipitously kept dropping and dropping. It's expected so to go. So did they actually use these materials? Of, I, I have somebody that knows somebody. They use the materials. They, they no longer pay us for them right. as a revenue. Right. <coughs> as a, as a, as a But they are being used. Still being used. Correct. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Pluff? All set. Mr. Hennis? All set. Mr. Brio? Very good. Mrs. Buckley? Yeah. Mrs. Capertis? So it's still a zero tax impact? Because it's coming out of the unassigned fund ballots for the year 2020, okay. it is. Thank you. Yeah, so the 425,127, as Mrs. Hale has said, is going to come out of the unassigned fund balance, so zero tax impact. Okay. Um, any more discussion on this? If not, I'll accept to entertain a motion to move this to public hearing, the number 425,127. I'll move that, sir. Moved by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Ms. Scapertis. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, so we get into the road discussions. Interesting enough, uh, for those, if you watched last evening, and especially under the master plan survey comments, a lot of the comments uh, so far have to do with roads. They want roads done, and they want roads done, and they want this done. So people are listening and watching, and one of the initial discussions that both Mr. Jacobs and Mrs. Hale have talked about for several months uh, since probably last spring, if not before, 
is the redoing of lock road sewer and drainage systems replacement. So that shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 850,000 for the purpose of replacing the lock road vitrified clay sewer line and the surface enclosed drainage systems that service parts of the street followed by the paving of the entire roadway, said cost to include survey and engineering, which is very critical. Reconstruction of the roadway may include traffic calming structures or other improvements to assist in controlling the speed of vehicles. The application of new pavement will occur, will occur in the year following the installation of the sewer and drainage replacement systems. Mr. Jacobs, Ms. Hale gave a great presentation on this and made it very clear that that will take place the following year. Why? Because you want to dig it all up first and get it all nice. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the work is completed or by March 31st, 2024, which is sooner or whatever sooner. Ms. Hale, do you want to comment on Mr. Jacobson? You did a great job. Yeah, no, you, you did that well. Uh, th this has been on our list to do. This has been brought before as a Warren article. Uh, it, it's been something that needs to get done. It is here for you because it's at the top of our list. Yeah, it's absolutely. also part of our CIP. We put together a CIP that goes to the, yes. uh, to the uh, planning board. Um, it seems to be it's reviewed and adopted every year. Um, we were continually critiqued many years ago, over four years ago. What's your plan? Show us what your plan is. Show us where you're going. How are you going to spend this money? How is it being reinvested in the community? So the CIP, CIP is our plan. Uh, Lock Road is right here at the top, of it, as is a lane, but a lane is already under contract. Um, so we're following through with the overall plan. And I would caution people, um, why is replacing the VIC vitrified clay pipes uh, important for only this reason? This year, the plant flow overall will <coughs> be down by 8%. Um, so it, projects like this long term will save the town the cost of it. We talked about all the money being invested in the wastewater treatment plant to keep it maintained. Projects like this will keep it so we don't have to expand the plant so that the capacity of the plant is being preserved. So there's an ancillary effect of doing this road and sewer project. Thank you. Mr. LeBranch? No, I'm all set for us. I'm fine tomorrow. Mr. Pluff? <coughs> Yeah, March 31, 2024. I hope it's done long before that. Oh, amen. Because <laughs> I don't want to see another Route 1. Right. Three or four years down the road. That, Nor do I. That, yeah. <laughs> that is a crime up there to crime. let that sit. It it's is. Rough. It is to those people. Oh. And it's the front door of this town. And you ask for the money, and we got the money sitting in the account, yeah. and it isn't done. It's a shame. It's a travesty. Well, we work with those businesses, and, and this is part of get it done. This is part of the plan that they agree. get it done. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. I agree with Mr. Puff as far as getting these projects done, and hopefully this project will go through and it will get done, uh, you know, earlier than 24. And as we all know, and I've been talking to a lot of people around town, and we all probably agree at this table. We have a lot of projects in this town coming up. We got so many roads in this town between High Street, Winnicott Road, go on and on. They're just falling apart. By spring, I can't imagine what they're going to be like. So we've got to start working on the infrastructure, and this is important. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. Mr. Bridal? All set. Mrs. Buckley? All set. Mrs. Capretis? All set. Yeah, I, I want to comment that, first of all, <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I am a huge believer and infrastructure improvements and you know having been on the CIP and all kinds of stuff and I like the fact that we're putting this out this is a bonded article I mean we here's the dilemma in the word evening and we look at Jen and Chris and, and all the stuff and I followed it all that needs to be done and so many big decisions have to be made I think starting with Lock Road is an absolute great thing to do it's a thoroughfare coming off 101 and, and, and you know for the locals that know this area they cut across lock and they know how to get to rye or northampton or whatever but i think there's, there's a lot of favor for this article and i but did i also hear you last night say that it will be all these things will be done by subcontractors yeah we put out the manpower of the equipment yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. the quickest way to get it oh it absolutely. would take the 2024 if <laughs> if we didn't yeah, yeah. We do it. right yeah mike and I, I do want to comment, as, and I have such 
high respect for Mr. Pluff, and I agree with him. I mean, one of the one of the things, through no deference of anybody, but this is the feedback that we get. We, we I guess I talk to a lot of different people, which is a good thing. And they don't mind spending money, but when you th see things that are left out here, we've got $1.5 million, and just putting it out there, that is still left to do Route 1. Mm -hmm. If you remember, five years ago, we asked the voters to pave Exeter Road. And at that time, what was said to the public was, when that gets paved, we are going to come back with a plan in five years to finish what really needs to be done. The good news of that, through the great work of you guys, is X in a row was done very well. So I don't think we're gonna have to worry about that. But, but the reason I bring these things up, public watches and they listen and they, they approve things and they wanna make sure. Before we go on to this, because I want the budget committee to start thinking for the rest of this meeting, we also heard discussion last night of Winnicott Road, okay? And I know that selectmen are gonna be talking about it in the tune of a million dollars, right? for and coming from the unassigned fund balance and that takes care of 20 percent of that problem which is not the math i like what i'm going to be entertaining and talking about later i want to put it in your minds i'd like to say let's get it done in two years let's bite the bullet bond it and do half one year and half the next we can't keep going down this road of putting it. and you even mentioned last night chris that if even if we did what it kind of this year we're not going to even be getting it or into it to 2021 anyway right. But we've got to really start, and because of that, it's going to involve maybe cutting back on some things. But that later, to give you an idea where I'm going with this, I, I would like to uh, a motion to move 850,000 to the public hearing for Lock Road, moved by Mr. LeBrand, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor? Unanimous. Excellent. The next one is public works replacement equipment. Shall I just fill in the blank? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Exeter Road is on the CIP for 2025. 2025. Okay. okay. Right, but we had, uh, the only reason I brought that up, Chris, because there was a, a statement that a plan was going to be here. That, well, and, okay. you know, I won't make the plan this year. I'm <laughs> no, I know that, I, and I'm just putting it up. Part of the so, 20, uh, the public works replacement equipment shall, go ahead, Mr. Wells. Mr. Chairman, just before you go on, the reason that we have figures like 2024 in there is because it takes a considerable amount of time after we finish the construction yeah. to close out the state grants, right. the SRF funding, and all these other things. <coughs> we have to have the money available to work with the state on those things. Correct. Thank Not you. that we're going to be using it for construction. That's going to be done in a year and a half. Good. Good point. Thank you. Um, public Works Equipment. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 303000 for the purchase of the following vehicles and equipment for the Department of Public Works? Two three and a quarter ton trucks with plows, one utility hot box, one 926M Caterpillar loader with any replaced vehicles to be traded in if deemed to be prudent by the public works, town manager and board of selectmen with said sum of 303000 to come from the unassigned fund balance. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until these purchases are completed or by, uh, should it say on or by, are completed or by, I don't know, it almost seems like are completed on or by March 31st, yeah. 2020. Oh, okay. <laughs> the state did that, Fred? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a guess for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Chris, Jen, do you want to talk on these? Uh, this is going through our rolling stock. We do this every year. We yep. do it more than once a year because during the year, what we thought was getting replaced the next year changes. Uh, right now, we have uh, allocated two three-quarter ton trucks that will be removed from the fleet when these come back into it. Uh, the loader right now is down. It is not even operational. We do not have it. Uh, this will replace it. There is a trade-in value for that. And our hot box is legitimately on its last leg, meaning the leg is about to fall off. What's a hot box? Uh, it's used for the asphalt so. patching, so mm -hmm. it's a heated box uh, that keeps the asphalt warm so they can work with it. Thank you. Why does this say 926M cat loader? That is Are we the not going out to bid? We decided <clears throat> two years ago when we um, got our first two or three seasons ago when we had that, that first cat loader we actually had brought to the site a cat loader 
John Deere, Volvo. I'm trying to think of the fourth one. There was four of them. Glatzel. I'm not really positive. Case. Case. Thank you. Case. Um, we get, had everybody who uses that level of equipment get that in them and evaluate them, similar to what the police did with respect to cruisers. They evaluated a piece of equipment. Was this the best type of equipment based upon visibility out of the cab, serviceability, um, the fact that we already had equipment or attachments. So we've selected a brand, if you will. And um, so this 926 will match the other 926s that we have. All the front end implements will be interchangeable as well the parts as well the service and that's why it says what it says and do, do you can you justify to me or to this committee you got a 2004 924 that has according to the rolling stock 2196 hours you have a 2014 924 with 2,420 hours, mm -hmm. and you want a third load. So what happens is we take the oldest loader yeah. and give it to the transfer station staff, and they use it on a daily basis to, if you will, uh, well, to turn the compost is its primary job. Um, then we use all three pieces of equipment when it comes to snow removal. So it'll actually be on the road. So we. Um, That's just the way we've done it, I guess you could say, is take the oldest piece of equipment first. Mm -hmm. Now, the piece of equipment that it's replacing is the dresser, I know. which $12,000 in transmission work is what it needs, it and it's upwards to, with all the other stuff, that closer to twenty. When we heard that, that's when we pulled the plug. stopped the presses, <laughs> right, pulled the plug, and say it no longer... Uh, when I got here eight years ago, uh, we had to literally rebuild the dresser because um, due to the rust, things of that yeah. nature. You look at the hours that are on the dresser, those are the hours that eventually will be <coughs> cats, but not for 10, 15 well, years. Well, they, they, don't, they don't show that kind of use. E even the 2004 has a... Right. The dresser is the, one of the last leftover pieces of equipment since when we had a landfill. Right. Well, in 96, we got it. Mm -hmm. so, I was on the board. Right. For a while. right. Yeah. So it was yeah. at the end of that period, and that's why that one has all those hours. Well, I, I can see what you're saying, and I can understand what you said, but to have three of those sitting around us. Well, they don't sit. I can honestly say the one, the one. At I, the, didn't, I the, didn't fill the book out. Right, no, else the one did. at the transfer station is working. Well, six or seven days a week. Well, the okay. One, one of these, and the other ones are their primary role is to support the sewer and drain yeah. in the highway department, and and, and the snow removal. That's when you see the the hours tick up. Yeah. Well. I guess it's all right. I understand what you're trying to do, but it's a lot of money. It's a very long-term purchase. Yeah. I mean, it isn't like a, no disrespect to police department, it isn't like I put a thousand miles a month on it and I'm gonna to have to trade it in three yeah. years, but at the same time, these are very critical pieces of equipment. You won't be sitting here with that when that's traded, I hope. I, I would agree with you. <laughs> 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 you and I are somewhere <laughs> different. <laughs> when that's somewhere warm, well, Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Hedges. So the oldest one is the dresser. That's the one yeah. that's going out. Right. That's going right. to be traded. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to have the uh, the two that we have, the 14, the 4, and then we're going to have a new one to replace it. Great. That's okay. correct. And we rotate them. Yeah. I mean, I agree with Mike. I mean, if you look at the 14, 2,000 hours, that's not a lot of hours. But um, Toby takes very good care of it. If you get the keys from thing. him, you've, you've earned the right to get the keys from him. Oh, but the fact that the dress is as old as it is and it's uh, become 
you know, it's like a cruiser. You know, you, we'd have years where, you know, let's keep them for an extra year, and what happens? The next year, all of a sudden, we're dropping transmissions, they're breaking down, and they're spending as much money as it costs to uh, buy a new one. So if the dresser, it's time to get rid of it, then I'm in favor of it at this point. I'm surprised that somebody is actually going to give us money for it. Nice. Because they say that... <laughs> okay. That's, a, that's good. That's a, yeah, yeah, you want it, you take it. Yeah. Mr. Brito. I think if you got 24 years out of, it, out of a piece of equipment that works in the conditions that it is, you've done an excellent job doing it, and I think mm -hmm. we need to replace it. Mrs. Buckley. All set. Ms. Capretas. No questions. I'll accept a motion to move to public motion. hearing the sum of 303000 Moved by Mr. LeBrant, seconded by Mr. Henderson. Any <laughs> further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, Unanimous. <laughs> the next one, uh, flood control designs. Um, I'm going to read the article, and I'm actually going to uh, look through my very knowledgeable friend, Mr. LeBranch, on this, because, and I want something to think before we approve or not recommend this. Selectman Barnes brought up something very interesting last night, and that was we've had two Warren articles with flooding that with hundreds of thousands of dollars that still her terminology aren't completed. And so she's concerned why are we asking for two hundred thousand more? But I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna you know hear Jen of course and then I want you to I, I will look for some guidance on this because I think her point was pretty valid if we've already got money in the works out there and why are we asking so shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of two hundred thousand for the purchase of moving forward solutions with flood control design for the protection of the west streets off of Ashworth Avenue, Brown Ave, the Island Path and Glade Path areas north to Winnicunit Road, including NH Route 1A and the areas surrounding Meadow Pond, including High Street, Kings Highway, Gentian, Green and Meadow Pond area. For those new to the board and watching at home, the last streets I just meant are directly off of Kings Highway uh, facing Meadow Pond. Um, such solutions and flood control designs are those recommended by the flood studies conducted by the town and the town's consultants. Funds may be utilized for design permitting of final engineering plans and construction plans for bidding purposes. 200000 will come from the other side fund balance. Uh, Jen, do you want to talk to that? I 100% do because I didn't get a chance to address it last night because we just went other places right. and it was not an article uh, that we were discussing. Um, I think it is extremely important to have me provide you with the update of where those two articles stand. Good. Um, as I've said all along, this is a modeling exercise. We're modeling harbor flows. We're modeling the flows, the high level waters, uh, the king tide levels, the salinity, the weather temperature uh, using sensors over in Meadow Pond. We've been collecting data now up and running since I believe April. Uh, before that, we went through a lengthy RFQ process to find the right engineering firms to do these studies. Uh, that is Malone McBroom. We just heard about them right. uh, doing this uh, master plan, also working with HTA. Uh, we got them under contracts. We divided the work up. Sensors have been in place. We had a meeting this, this morning uh, to give an update to do our next check-in point. In two weeks, the data that we'll be using for our modeling, we're calling complete. The sensors are not coming out. We're keeping the sensors in to continue flood study monitoring, sea level rise, the changes. We're not removing them. UNH is continuing to do them and use them through a grant with DES. That data will then be put into the reports that we're looking for that are going to recommend what is it that we're going to do. The King Highway's drainage design, the preliminary look at it, it'll be in there. It will have a dollar value. How can you do it? Just putting catch basins in using an old pump station, it's not that easy. That's what they're looking at because just fixing that doesn't fix the flooding that's happening out on the back end of Gentian. It certainly doesn't fix the flooding that's happening out in Manchester and Hobson. So this is a lot of explanation to talk about where the existing money is going. <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard that we picked up another 185000 that is piggybacking off of those. So taking those two reports and their recommendations for both the west uh, side of Ashworth and the Gentian Green Highway areas, those recommendations are going, what two or three of each of those recommendations can we put through design? Design means 
engineering. Design means permitting through mm -hmm. Army Corps, through DES, through our own local entity. And then this funding is what everybody is always asking us to do. Why don't you guys plan ahead for this? Why don't you plan ahead for this? Well, if I want to go after the next round of the National uh, Wildlife and Fish Foundation, and I said that completely backwards, I apologize, um, for their next round of grants, which allows us matching money, so we'd get another $200, 200,000, if it were 200, I'm sure we wouldn't have this long of a conversation. Um, <laughs> this 200,000 is the match to that 200,000, so that's $400,000 to actually implement design and permit. Implement meaning the small things. Is it a tide gate? Something that doesn't need to be built, not a whole drainage system. And then from there, I will be back next year asking for the next one because that's construction funding. And the grant program that I'm working through right now, the limit for that is not the 200. They don't have a limit. It could be a million. And if we approve it, I could do drainage systems. We talk about what kind of barriers can be done. Maybe there needs to be a dredging of Meadow Pond. These are all the alternatives that are out there that the current engineers are using. So we talk about planning and how can we get when it cut it moving and we talk about infrastructure and we've got to do roads. Two years ago, we sat in this room and one of the biggest thing you heard from the residents down at the beach and you'll still hear it is the flooding. Right. So I haven't, Chris hasn't, and I'm sure none of you have, forgot that we still have a flooding issue right. that we have to also work on. So that's what this 200,000 is for. It's to continue building upon where we're at. So now we're going for the modeling. We have the grant money to take it to preliminary design. This 200,000 will be the basis for some implementation and also the basis for um, a new grant matching funds for us to then take it even farther from there. So that's my very long story. Hold, hold on one second, David. I just had a quick question as we guide through this. Having watched all the meetings, and I just want a clarification here, because I saw the Kings Highway folks that have come in, the Gentian Pass, I and mean, this is some serious flooding. I was under the impression that we had already approved some monies for that area, or is this the first time we're approving monies? No, this is, you have approved. The money that is approved right. was the, approved under two Warren articles. Okay, so what's the, One Warren article is what I call, or what I've been saying, as the west side of Ashworth. That is your Hobson... No, uh, I know Manchester. that. I was talking about yeah. Kings Highway. Yeah. And Kings Highway in here, it, this is lo listing all of them. Okay. So yep. this money can be used on all of them, looking at flooding as okay. a whole versus having the two different pots, which is what we're building off of no, right that's, now. That's good. Were those both 100 each? It was one was 100 and 100. one was 80. 80. And it was oh. like so that's why we got 185. Yeah. It was the 180 correct. was the matching. Yeah. 5,000 of in-kind contribution from our time. And mm -hmm. uh, we've teamed with UNH, DES, yeah. Coastal okay. Resilience. I mean, a bunch of people contributing to this. So do you see this, I mean, I'm sitting here now in 2020, you mentioned next year, back. do you see this number increasing, increasing, increasing with all the flood problems? And the construction. The construction costs, costs definitely. Yeah, right. This is to get us to construction. Yeah, well, to construction, not yeah. through construction. Also what will increase is the um, funding that we get through the federal level. Hopefully. Well, what you, you set up a pattern, and when the voters approved 185, yeah. FEMA and the Homeland the NOAA? Emergency Management NOAA. Plan, Emergency NOAA. NOAA. I mean, NOAA came up what from D.C. to visit. What they see is Hampton made a commitment to get this done. Okay. Yeah. This gets approved, they say again, Hampton's making a commitment to get this done. We'll match this or we'll... We'll go back somewhere. this, right. and then when it comes to, like she said, when it comes to that, uh, with a firm plan based with these dollars, a design that they can support and is getting approved permitting wise, they'll say, okay, then we can back this. Until we take this step, they won't take their step. And you, I know you represent that's excellent, Mr. Branch. I, I, you know, Jen and I are on the same committee with the uh, chat and everything. Yeah. Um, this, just so that people at home know, that this is just a, another almost baby step towards it's what we're going thing. towards. Yeah, this yeah. is not going to uh, solve, solve the flooding problem by any means. This is just 
what? I kind of see what we, building block. It's a we build the first building block. This is the second. Totally Another baby step. Th this right. is actually the third. I, I see it in four. I mean, I, I'll yeah. be very honest. What we did at the 180, meaning we, the town of Hampton, did mm -hmm. at 180 was one. Mm -hmm. The grant is two. This becomes three, another grant becomes four, we do five and we get construction grant. Right. I mean, that's how I've been explaining it to everybody. Okay, right. and the, the thing is that, um, <laughs> the thing is that being on this, the, the committee that we talk about this flooding a lot, <laughs> and people come to the village district, for instance, we had people show up last year, and and for the people that are living on Hobbs or, or, or uh, Manchester, they just want something done. But the thing is, they, they have to understand, is that it has to be done properly. There's no sense to doing something halfway. It's got to be done all the way. Now, this is similar to the master plan when I spoke before. If you have a master plan, if you have a plan, then you're going to be able to get some grant money from other places, the federal government, the state government. And this is just, it's more of the same. Okay, so and I'm totally in favor. Thank of you, course. Stephen. Thank That's you. I really appreciate your advice on it, uh, Mr. Mar. Um, I struggle with this whole situation, and I have for a couple of years watching television. As a matter of fact, I saw a thing about three days ago, <coughs> Revere, Massachusetts, and this lady was being interviewed from a, a national CBS one, I believe, and she had moved there for <coughs> she was across the street from. From, from the ocean. I saw the same episode. You got it. And she was talking and she said, well, did this happen before? She's 35 years ago, we never flooded. And then he asked her, how often does it happen now? She said it happened 27 times this year. Yeah. The entire road flooded, the tides come up, and the mistake was, it's, how do you, and you people can't pull wraps out of the hat. This is my struggle, and how would anybody even think of doing it? But the, 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 there's still melting going on with the glaciers. The water is going to continue to rise and rise and rise. So pretend we, I'm going to say pretend we build a wall, but you can't build a wall that goes all the way up the coast of Seaco. You can't pretend you did. And you make it this high because it doesn't come afford that. But the water is going to eventually keep rising and go over the wall. And you have places down in, in uh, down by uh, Newburyport and Plum Island where they've had it on TV and, and it's just, they're way up and high on the cliffs and the erosion and then they show you on the news for the last three or four years, cabins just falling and houses falling into the ocean because you can't fight mother nature. So I understand the need, and I'm not against this thing going forward. I'm struggling because it's a plan to plan to plan. Then when you're going to start, what are you going to construct to stop Mother Nature raising the water? Help me with that all Whatever way. they construct or they come up with ideas to then implement, uh, we'll be back before this board discussing those. That's why it takes a review process. And the review process is they're going to ask that same question. Have you taken into account sea level rise? Are we, you know, they won't be allowed to recommend a bunch of straw. An, ac an actual recommendation, and I, I've been very honest with every group that I've talked to about this, an actual recommendation that can come from some of these studies is what they call um, managed retreat, retreat. or um, exactly. bringing properties back to estuary form. Right. If you think about where we got the grant from, um, they're not looking for hard solutions, not that they won't support them, but there's a combination. I, I've said this all along. If you're the one that is consistently flooding and the end of your street is underwater, and you know what? You, it's, it is happening more frequently now. It happened in the past once or yeah, twice yeah. it's just happening over and over mm -hmm. and this is repetitive loss and repetitive loss doesn't get insured i mean it, these are bigger problems themselves however if there were solutions which i believe there are some that can alleviate flooding meaning you can stay where you are and perhaps you do something that gets you up and we do something that gets water away You've managed a way to stay where you are. And, and that's the real goal of this and why it's so many steps and, and what could be done. 
construction funding could be funding that's provided by the government to help with raising structures, retreat, raising roads, redoing infrastructure. I mean, it goes, the, every one of these things are, are an option. Not one of them alone fixes it. Understood. David, could I? I just want to, there are three things that can be done with the flooding. You can waterproof it, <clears throat> which means you build a moat around it somehow. You can raise the structure so that the water, you live with the problem. The water comes in, the water goes out at low tide. The third thing, and this is what we've been doing on that chat committee for the last year, is you retreat. And that's going to be part of the solution, solution yep. okay? And that's, sorry and folks. And retreating because of vulnerability. When we do these mapping exercises, we're looking at where is our wastewater treatment plant? Where are the getting out from the beach? If, if we're watered in from the back and we're watered in from the front, where is our most vulnerable spots? Uh, so you're looking and you're prioritizing just like we do with roads. You can't just all leave. We're looking at what are our most vulnerable spots due to sea level rise and the change in Mother Nature and how are we going to live with them or move on without them. There was also one I want to add to it. It was about a year ago down in Cape Cod. It was the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And it had been the same thing as we have here at, at, at Plum Island. So they moved it and, it talked, right, and they showed different portions of it on TV, on TV for about a week. And they moved it like the lighthouse about 350 feet or 350 yards, something like that, away from what it was. And now it's going to be secure. But then they were talking. Oh, and over the next 50 years, they may need to move it again. Oh, sure. So I was saying, why didn't you just keep moving it <laughs> until you don't think, think you'll hit the spot? But they move a massive lighthouse because there's nothing to do to stop with it. So I'm saying you're down there on the beach and across in the water, and the water's getting higher and higher. It's like what, some pump is going to stop the ocean from coming in. Anyway, mm -hmm. they're just questions that I'm glad to think of. But thank you. Everything you said, I appreciate it. Thanks. Mr. Mara, thank you. Mr. Pluff? I'm all set. Mr. Henderson? Mr. Brown? Mrs. Butler? All set. Mr. Capers, I'm all set, too. Thank you for the great explanation. I'll accept a motion to move $200,000 to the uh, January 16th public hearing. Moved by Mr. Henderson, seconded by who wants it? Yes, Mr. Pluff. We'll, 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 we'll spread it around. Spread it around. Spread it around. All give those it, in favor? to Steve. Yeah. Unanimous. Yeah. Excellent go. discussion. The next one. Um, if you watch the meetings, this has been explained very well by Mrs. Hale and Mr. Jacobs. The intersection, <coughs> sidewalk, and traffic light improvements, High Street and Mill Road. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $195,000 for the reconstruction of the High Street and Mill Road intersection to include the replacement of sidewalk approaches? It's a key word in this. In accordance with ADA sidewalk construction and the installation of underground piping for future pedestrian signal improvements. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation uh, on or before March 31st, 2025. Note, the money did not include the required work on the traffic control and lighting system that is in need of replacement. <coughs> uh, again, a Warren article that really explains exactly what we're Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. Uh, yep. It is the approaches from all four sides. This was identified in the Safe Routes to School Plan. This is a, a important intersection for everybody who walks, and this oh, is yeah. what it takes to do it. Yep. I've been there really. Um, Anybody have any comments? Pretty straightforward. I'll accept the motion, 195000 to move to public hearing. Moved by Mr. Henderson, seconded by Ms. Capertis. Any comments? Mr. Fluff. You, you talked about uh, High Street last night. Uh, Sorry. From five corners to the beach, the piping is pretty well done, you said. There's the <coughs> sewer, sewer pipe yeah. is PVC right. from five corners to the beach right. on right. High Street, yes. Right. Then you proceeded to say from five corners to Route 1, it was a different story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we redo all of this this year and High Street comes up to be done, say the lower end somewhere right off quick, and then the next logical step would be to go from five corners back to Route 1 and finish that. Is this a little bit too early, or the second phase has nothing to do with this phase? 
I, I would say that this is not too early in, in here are the reasons. The limited area of right of way. It, it, it is it, what it actually is. Actually, out of the road, it's the edge. Oh, sure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so this is going to involve a little bit of um, small wall yeah. work. It's yeah. going to be some ramping right. uh, and signals. So because of that limited uh, width, um, yeah. no. Yeah. Because what will happen when we come back with the road? The utilities are not there. It there will be pavement to pavement, and we'll be able to go inside. And yeah. you have to stick with Mill Road at the height. Of the yeah, I know. It's it's a fixed. In a section that's the, the one thing that makes this yeah. very difficult right it's a little branch yeah. and I just want to mention for uh, for everybody that I've been at that um, that stoplight many times when the kids are getting out of school mm -hmm. between the Marston school and the Academy the, uh, that is used a lot there are a lot oh, of kids course, that yeah. walk along that particular intersection yeah. so thank you very thank much you. I just have one question uh, based on um, the other comment. Are there crossing guards at that intersection no, uh, during no. certain times? No. Not that I've seen. Okay. No. Shouldn't there be? Not in. That, that wouldn't be a public works question. Right. I was going to say not in my wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, <laughs> that would be where for the school in the yeah. slot. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That would be something. Good question, but good uh, question. Yeah. Well, we'll, have to, we'll, we'll just push it in another direction. I'm just asking. Mr. Brito will bring that up this coming year. <laughs> well, we that would be a school board. More well, school board, but still, right. if it's time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if they have the cross, if they if they put the crossing lights in there, yeah. then you'll have the. And they won't be the crossing lights of yesterday. I mean, we're going with yeah. the actuated push button, the lighting. No, that's going to be better. You know. and, that, and that's the whole idea of this because right, right now, but, oh, it, but the kids get there and there isn't a little button nothing, to push nothing, for them. There's nothing, there's nothing at that That's intersection. the idea of this thing, and that is it's yeah. well right. used. So yeah. kids walk up. Oh, there, absolutely! It's press the button, and you're going to be a lot safer. Thank you. But um, but this doesn't include the this right. doesn't include the um, it does not crosswalk. include the new signal overhead signal, right. lighting. <coughs> what it will put in is the conduit and what we need um, to put the matching signal across the top with the push button system. They're right. all uh, correlated together. Okay. Um, and and I say that because if you remember, we did on High Street and. Uh, Route 1 and Exeter Road, so, yep, four yep. different names here in my head, um, we put in the camera system, and that was able to get our crossing signals out from the cables, uh, so we don't have to rely on them, and that's what this will all do is integrate it together. Okay. Yeah, so I think it would be important that the uh, delivery of session, especially that the 195, but also mentioned that there's going to be additional monies that are going to be needed to I'll accept a motion to move 195,000 to public hearing for intersection sidewalk traffic light improvements, High Street Mill Road. Moved by Mr. Mara, seconded by Mr. Henderson. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one, uh, a couple more to go here. Uh, then we'll be in great shape. Slide and reloading refuse and recycling trucks. Shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize the board of selectmen to enter into a five-year lease purchase agreement for one. Mac cab over refuse and recycling truck with a Labri automated two sided loader body unit. Am I doing good on that, Mr. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> the amount of 350395 dollars including interest. The yearly payment being seventy five thousand five hundred and one Mac sixteen yard rear loading refuse and recycling truck in the amount of two hundred thirty seven thousand ninety dollars including interest. The yearly payment being fifty-one thousand, and to raise and appropriate the sum of one hundred and twenty-six thousand five hundred to fund said lease purchase agreement in year one, with said lease lease purchase <coughs> agreement to contain a non-appropriation clause. Explain. Yes. Um, first truck is similar to the two. Uh, sidearm trucks that we picked up earlier uh, last was it last year right um, they literally pick up both the trash and or recycling carts this one um, will have an arm on both sides the last ones don't they have an arm on one side and a cart slipper on the other um, staff made the recommendation hey we need one at least one of these automated trucks with the arms on both sides 
Uh, it's because of the places we have to go and the number of carts that we have to pick up. Um, we used to have three of these when we received the other two because we were having so much fun with them in the mechanics area, we traded all three units in basically because at that time the truck had value. If we let it go that other another year, year and a half, yeah. it wouldn't. Uh, by the way, even if this gets approved, it takes almost 18 months to get the truck. Say it takes we won't even see it in 20 might see it at the end of 2021, but that'll be, remains to be seen. Um, the other truck, the 16 yard rear loading, that's the one you're used to seeing that has the big uh, push bar or scoop and you see two gentlemen or one gentleman on the back end with the cart flippers. Um, that is going to need, needs to replace unit 96. Uh, we identified, uh, Late, late September. September is our inspection month. Uh, 96 would not pass inspection. Mm -hmm. The whole frame underneath um, is rotting out. Um, so we did the minor repairs that we needed to. To, to white to welding, get it, weld it up a little bit, a couple it. thousand Pass dollars. It up, yeah. It will run for the next year. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's not our primary right. vehicle. Right. So, and, and that's the difference. No, I mean, exactly. it's. Yeah. And to answer Mr. Pluff's question, why you know, versus you know the same answer question, why a John uh, a cat loader, why a Mac? Um, there again, we've gone through the evaluation process, and in part, um, based with your help a number of years ago, uh, buy something that will last. That will, in other words, we have a five-year payment for this truck, but we're expecting a 20-year life out of this truck, and and uh, and the other Macs that we've ordered. Uh, we just received December 10th. Mm -hmm. We received our new Mac with plow and wing. Staff very, very happy with it. Uh, we didn't even slow down long enough to put stickers on it. We put it right up to use, plow and snow, not two days later. So, um, and thank you, Chris. That's Did the you one. Two, two questions oh, right off. Uh, the 16 yard of, is that? Packer coming from Canada, or is that going to be made in the United States? That Packer would probably come from the United States. It's, I believe it's a it is a Libri. Manufactured up there, but shipped. Ship. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, the other one goes up there. The mechanical one comes from up there. Correct. It comes from Canada. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know this is. Probably not going to sit well, but with what's the turmoil that's going on in the trash industry, what if you purchased the real loader and held off on the uh, mechanical one for one year? You, you you traded three that were eight years old. Right. Because of the engines. Because of the engines. But you continually came here and said, the maintenance is killing us. Right. The joystick controls. It was, it was more the engines. Four but times, I think, we had to rebuild the, the exhaust. emissions. EGR. Yeah. EGR but, systems. But the mechanical packers have expensive repairs to them. You, you talked about the pumps. You were talking about the electronical components of the, the joysticks. Joystick. Yep. The real loaders are are proven from years and years and years. They are proven. You get a good chassis and you get a good packer, you you put what you call a cart tippers on the back, left or right, so that you can get out of the street and load from either side, because when you get into these narrow developments, especially down at the beach, you can't drive in and turn around and drive out. So if you had a one on each side, you could go down and, and load. Even if you only have one guy, you still can load left and right. Well, that, that in, you just said it, even if you have one guy. That has been now the key problem. Mm -hmm. We are down two staff. We can't even find them to hire them. In the summer, we had openings for, I think, five, and we found three. 
The reason why my budget was so good and came in the black this year is I couldn't hire people to spend the money. So the reason why we need the three sidearm trucks is you, we can find a driver. I can't find the laborers. Um, and that's getting to be the real problem. Even the summer beach crew, it used to be six people. Yeah. Yeah. It was down to three this summer because oh, wow. that's all you could get that would want to do the work. work. Yeah. So we're having the same issue the restaurant business is having, the state parks is having for lifeguards, yeah. it's labor. Yeah. And that's where that rear packer will, that's its demise. Yeah. Is you need two people on the back end during the summer to load it. Well, you need two people for the truck. Yeah, you need the driver and, and, and at least and one on the back. At least one. And, to really optimize the truck, you need to. Yeah. It comes. We put two flippers on it because well, we can load it from both sides. It, and what you're doing with it? Because when it goes down the little river road, yeah. with one guy on it, it does fine. It goes down the road and it comes back. During the during the off season, yeah. off season, the 13 weeks of yeah. the when we get and, the, and these, overrun. And neither one of these is uh, proposed to have a pusher axle on them. That's a new. That's a term. Okay, you'll have to educate you, me. You've got a truck down there that has one, a real load up. Right. And I've seen it since Thanksgiving. Three or four weeks in a row, on a little river road with a with a pusher axle down. Pusher axle. Trying to try to turn around and go up and down the street. To me, it's that's made specifically for overweight when it's fully loaded to to truck over the road. It gives you more braking power and it takes straight and may, on. And you may be talking, the one that you may have been seeing out there is the 20 or 22 yard yeah. rear pack that we have. The yeah. reason why this one's only a 16 is because it, it can't put a bigger truck down the beach. That's the reason. Well, I, don't, many of our roads. I don't think the, you I they, don't think you gain anything by, that one was, right. you bought that, the board bought that uh, mm -hmm. in a hurry. But I mean that one. You're right. Is is made for let's say doing King's Highway and well, well it's longer, made, straighter runs. It's, it's made to haul the Rochester is what it's made to do. Mm -hmm. But you don't use that in town. You could you could take the wheels off it, and, right. and it would be lighter still. I mean, it, right. I'm just the, yeah. It doesn't specify, but we. No, actually, I've already had the conversation with the the Mac rep. Do you want the that secondary axle. I said no. Uh, That's the whole reason why it's only a 16, and because of the need to, to, for the well, turn ratings. The whole trash industry is going to change. I don't know whether we're buying things we don't need or buying things that we do need that we won't need by the time we get them paid for. I don't know. I, I don't think you know now. I do know this that McDivitt, the sales reps, out of, and I've had it in writing on the other trucks is. If after three years we decide we're having a change, we no longer need the truck, they have a buyback program. Guaranteed they will buy back the truck. In other words, well, well, and, and, they, and a lot more higher value than, yeah. let's say, a, trading value. a Nissan oh, I know. truck with a, yeah. We've been there already. Yeah. Slow branch. I just want to thank the, um, the, the selectmen, the town manager, and both of you for doing this the way you were doing it, and that is you're not going out and buying these trucks, you're leasing them, and which is helping the voters in this town, the, the taxpayers, and it's the solution to what Mr. Cliff is talking about in, in three years, five years, as things change. You don't need these things, you just end the lease. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marr. Oh, I have a question. I've added all these things together, just for the sake of doing it, plus I added the 51000 because it's a one-year lease just for the first year. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And the total comes up to like $839,985, rounded off to $840,000. We'll put them all together. Is there any way to separate this into two different, so in case if, if the voter said, well, that's big, and they wanted to make a decision between A or B, they could go for one or the like other. Put one truck in one and one in another? Yes, sir. Uh, the concern was, and it came down through the manager's office, we're trying to keep less than 60 or 70 warrant articles so that... Um, 
So that's well, why we this were one was buying other trucks earlier, which we approved. Right. We this one was right. this one a lot was of money going on, and he's uh, add them all up. <laughs> it, right. Even though we went back with the taxes on the default budget, the, yep. these things are making everything go. That your, your number's off. Your, yeah, your number, David, is off. Yeah. If you add the two numbers that need to be raised and appropriated, it's it, the total is five hundred eighty-seven thousand. I added the something. fact of the uh, one twenty-six to the two thirty-seven ninety to the seventy-five thousand to the three hundred fifty-nine five. I had the fifty-one thousand. Eight hundred forty thousand. Double accounting. Yeah. 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 I said I included the yearly payment. No, no, no. That's, 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 no. Yeah, that's 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 not necessary. But it, right. Well, you still have to pay it. No, no, no it's you're only one twenty-six times five. Right, right. It's right. one twenty-six it times five. That's correct. Not. It's a hundred and it's a hundred and twenty six thousand five hundred. Yeah, is the um, annual lease payment for both trucks right. for five years? That's right. Okay. You don't ha you don't have to add the two thirty seven and the three fifty. Why don't you add the two thirty seven? Because that's how the lease payment gets calculated. So it's wait, probably if, article rent. Go ahead. So the price of the two arm truck. Its total price with interest is three hundred and fifty three ninety five. Right. Its yearly payment is the seventy. The way this is written is confusing. I would try to clear it yeah. up for the voters. Well, DRA says that a That's we have to sell, tell the voters what the, what total, the total, total price is right. over the five years, right. and we have to tell them what the first year payment is. Right. It's the same way. Like when you any of us go to a dealership and we buy a car, they tell us, okay, it's three hundred a month. But with interest, you're going to pay twenty-eight five for this car. That's the same. Well, you pay even more because they all ask for a, for a down payment of five thousand. They don't add that into monthly payment. They're just still paying the whole. Yeah, so six thirty-two five. Total cost. Right. That's what yes. I was trying. With to do. interest. Yes. Yeah. So Thank is there you. something that could say the total cost of this article is? It's going to be six hundred and thirty-two thousand five hundred. That interest. should be here written in the article. My point is that. Thank you. Well, it is. It is. It, it is. It the says language has to the be the amount. It says 35095 including interest. DRA. Yeah. Yeah. So the DRA language stays. Yeah. Yeah. The, the DRA assumes that the voters. I'm just saying the view of the vote is going to get getting confused. Well, they, we, we will explain that. it at the. Uh, I think yeah. uh, Mr. Henderson? No, sir. Mr. Spratt? No, sir. No question. Um, let me ask you a question. With the discussion of trash and trash. You're asking for the two-sided loader body. Those are the ones that the, the new ones with can you know, lift it up, guy driving, whatever. Could you live? Could you live as Mr. Pluff has alluded to with a year with a rear loader? Understanding, I know you want two guys on the back, but one. The reason I say that is a discussion for another board and another night. But the biggest rumblings in this town now is this thing called trash. Mm -hmm. Who's to say, I have my own opinion on trash, but who's to say we don't get rid of it? And then we're not gonna need as much of these trucks. And I'm just putting it out there because this is a serious issue that's gonna have to be addressed. If you sat here and watched every presentation by Public Works in the last five years, the workload on their plate is one thing. The amount of millions we spend on vehicles is another thing. I'm not sure, based on even last night's decision on a three to two vote to limit to 10 carts for, to go back with the processes, is an end, is that, is going to be the end of that discussion. So my concern is, can we look at helping out the taxpayers and saying, okay, I, I believe what Mr. Puff has said, the real loaders I think work terrific. Can you live with one of those this year and kind of hold off to see where this whole discussion is going? Regardless whether you get help or not, you need a driver of a truck, right? And if you have one on a rear loader um, that has worked for all these years, can we get by with just that one instead of going down the road or buying another these two-sided loader, which can be very expensive for maintenance? Brings to two points. One. I, I do need the truck because I've actually last summer leased a truck. Twenty-seven. What was it? Twenty thirty. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight thousand dollars yep. for yep. a thirteen-week period. Uh, they drove it out from Ohio and then they drove it back. Um, and it also goes back to the CIP. You know, we put together an expenditure for for equipment, and when I first. 
Mr. LeBranch brought it up. The reason we lease these trucks now versus outright buying them is the CIP was like a bouncing, it was worse than a ping pong ball. It was, we would have been into the outright purchase, we would have been into the millions per year. We had a goal or we've set a goal and you know, like this year, the vehicles through the CIP comes to four hundred fifty-two thousand dollars. Next year, it's four forty-six. Then it's five twelve, four sixty-three, three fifty-nine. You can see we're trying to stay somewhere around the four hundred thousand dollar mark. We have some huge vehicles that, you know, we're if we don't continue the process of cycling out the older vehicles we're gonna and we skip years like we did in the past we get to the place that when i got here a mac with 28 years on it a mac with 27 years on it um I, in, yeah the internationals you're going to be you're, you're going to end up in a um having the discussion why is now the vehicle replacement up to 600,000 or 800,000. Long term I know I have a back truck that isn't going to last forever. It gets eaten up internally. I know a sweeper goes about seven years. So if we don't face the music on this truck, we're making the music louder in future years when the sweeper, the back truck, the trailers trash trailers wear out, then there's going to be more things. It's it's up to the voters to postpone it, if you will, another year, if that's what they want to do. But, it, but, but I think here, he, he, here's the situation that I struggle with. We have said over many occasions in the last year how recycling, it's tripled the tonnage. Mm -hmm. The amount of trash, is, it's just enormous in this community. And then we say to our taxpayers who are paying thousands of dollars in taxes, you better recycle and you better be doing this. And listen, I'm all for it. But at the end of the day, all we keep hearing about, and through no fault to you, by the way, this isn't meant as a, as a fault to you and you're bringing forth. All we hear about is we need these new trash vehicles and we need this new. Maybe there's a sentiment that wants to get rid of this. And so if that's the case, wouldn't we better spend our time looking at these road improvements? Think about all the monies on the vehicles. Road improvements, sewer improvements, beach improvements, which Mr. Brighto alluded to last night, that was never funded in that 12 million, and they ran out of money. We, I was down there working with Chief Sullivan at the time, getting everybody to, to digging up roads and state property to get that done with the sewer and the water, and it was a good thing going. But we're at a junction in this town now. And if you ask a person on the street that works out of town 50 hours a week, 60 hours, they love to, I'm a big lover of the transfer station, best thing we ever did in 95. But you ask the pe person, people in my own family that are young and growing up in this town, you know what they say? Is all we doing is picking up trash? See, I'm just saying that, that we've got to, we've got to, and, and like I said, this is a process, mm -hmm. the selectmen, I, Having been a selectman, I understand that. I believe me, if I was sitting in that board, there would be decision. I would be making motions now to do things. We have got to get the. We've got to take it by the horns. We are. We're at a critical juncture. I appreciate the fact, but it just seems to me, as Mr. Pluff, who I respect so highly on this stuff, and and going back all through the years, we keep new trucks and new trucks and new trucks. Maybe we say we need to end some of this, so we don't need to. And, and that's that's a discussion that I understand needs to take place somewhere else. No, but you'd, I, you're, you'd be going counter to the actual votes of history. Two thousand. The reason oh, was yeah. June. I get here June first, twenty eleven, and the first thing I see within two weeks driving is the six, oh, the new Packer trucks and the six trailers. Reason why is because you had a private contractor picking up trash in this town. And every Friday, they'd leave town at midday, mid-afternoon, and not pick up whole streets and whole sections of town because their, their drivers were already maxed out with overtime. Craig Musselman sat here before the Saul Waste Committee I and said, the reason why, if you have a decent, good service in your town, 
and for the most part, we're always picking up, you know, we don't miss whole streets. Um, we get behind when we're, we can either plow snow or pick up trash, that's when we get behind. So this whole idea of, well, let's not be in the trash collection service anymore is counter to what the voters decided in 2010 and the level of service that they wanted. If they choose to want to back away from that, that is their choice. The second thing that we have to remember, um, there's been a number of Warren articles, stop picking up commercial trash. And overwhelmingly, 3,000 to 200 or whatever the, the counts have been, the voters have said, no, we want to keep picking up commercial trash. We want to support the commercial side of town. So those two votes, those actions, lead us to continue to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And until there's but, been a wholesale change, yeah, but I don't that, see that happening. That philosophy can be said on any board that's been in this town when things change. I don't, I don't think what happened in 2011 necessarily is what's going on now. And so that's the point I'm saying to you, that we, I see it and I sense it. You saw it last evening with the discussion. Mm -hmm. So you obviously know there's that permeated throughout the whole community. Forget the entire trash, just the commercial trash alone. All I'm saying is, after the vote in March, these discussions are going to continue. I agree. So could we be um, amenable to at least maybe doing one of these and then continuing that discussion? And then at the end of the day, as Mr. Pluff has said, it could go what you have said before. And we put an end to it. It could say, okay, the voters, for once and for all, we're going to pick up trash till 4,020. Or are we going to look at a modified version that is not going to have in, 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 in monies to ask the taxpayers every year or every two years at least in the form of lease, which I'm all for leases, these type of things? Because I'm going to tell you, um, and, and, I'll, and I'm going to go around the table a minute, in 1999, Mr. Pluff and I were at LeMay's, which is the old salt now. John Hangen sat there, the former public works director, said that year that when he was sitting there that we would have to spend $74 million just on roads. And everybody laughed at him. And they said, what? We were all there. We were all sucking. And we were like, what's... The reason that's important is we are now at that junction. Mr. Welch has so eloquently said $115 million in roads, sewer improvements, the beach side streets off of Ashworth that didn't get done, the $13 million that we approved for the, the water treatment plan, which we have two more installments. We've got the west side development. The fire chief came and gave an excellent presentation of a substation on the west side of development. I'm saying that we can't continue to do everything unless we give up something. It just doesn't happen in other communities. I will end this by saying, we are the only community that collects commercial trash. You want, hey, listen, you live up in Milton, you understand that, right? I mean, there's nobody that does what we do. So maybe we got to stop doing and start looking out of the box and seeing the things that are going to make the taxpayer think that their little bumpy road is going to be done. And I know that's not your, I appreciate what you brought forth. I'm just saying as chairman of this committee, I think a good message would be sent that if we could somehow do a rear loader this year, kind of look back at our whole maintenance picture, give and, and have some sort of weekly, monthly update to the boards. You can include us on it, just to see where we're going with this. It just seems to me in all the years, and, and we've talked about this as far as the amount. I'm gonna go around to my fellow members and see, and, and I understand it's a it's a tough discussion, and, and I, I appreciate everybody's input either way, but that's just the way I'm feeling from feedback I'm getting. Community. Go ahead, Mr. LeBrand. Um, personally, I'm comfortable with this right now. If we don't get this truck, the sidearm truck, then you're going to have to rent a truck anyway this summer. That, and you're going to have to do it anyway. You're going to it's gonna have to do it anyway. Right, right. Because it's, right. It's, you're not going to have yeah. this Whatever thing. you're saying is going to be I am comfortable with this and the fact that ordering it now, if something nobody knows what's going to happen two or three years from now or even what's going to happen tomorrow, to tell you the truth. But if you find that you don't need it, if you find that the public sentiment has changed and they don't want to, they want to take a completely different direction, well then, you don't have to keep leasing the vehicles, do you? Simple as that. I'm comfortable with the plan that, we, that you've made. 
that's the plan I would like to go with. Mr. Thank Mar. You very much. I'm just getting confused in the whole thing. Um, what Steve just said makes sense. Uh, what <coughs> Venture is doing the best he can. It's overall, you do you had, you had public work a phenomenal job. Since 1980, <laughs> it's always been phenomenal. I think we should probably go the level of the leasing. You bring up good points because a year or two years from now. I would like the fact that we only get one truck versus two. I like that idea. If it's possible, that it works. But if we put them in a back hole, I wouldn't want to do that. So it's like caught between a rock and a hard place. Can, can I just one Go comment ahead, on that? And, and I want to do it because I wrote down like this whole speech, <laughs> just so I wouldn't forget. Um, Chris mentioned, you know, there's times we get behind. You know, when it's snowy, we can't pick up trash. Right. Well, we also get behind when our vehicles aren't working. And when we're down a vehicle for, yes, we'll have the summer one, but something else goes down, and then this 96, go, something else goes down, we get behind. If you recall this year, before we got the new vehicles in, we were a week and a half of three different messages that had to go out. Mm -hmm. Sorry there was a delay, mm -hmm. sorry there was a delay, sorry it's like mm -hmm. So not preparing for what we believe we need has, risk and, and that's really how I want to leave it when we do the budget we want people to recycle more and we have some ideas and maybe new policies are going to force that but we don't reduce the budget hoping will happen because you won't see the effect for a year so if we do have a change in policies and collections and needs it's still not going to happen automatically we're, we're going to need it so that's a little speech I wrote. Right. thank you Mr. Pluff well, we all know trash is a big problem. It's been discussed and kicked around for a long time. I mean, I can go back probably 20 years we've been battling this. And how we're going to handle businesses, how we're going to handle residents. I can tell you personally and probably from talking to a lot of residents in town, they enjoy the services in this town. And one of them is, is they pick up their trash and they pick up the way it is. Most people I talk to, they're not interested in bag and tag. It's not something. They pay good taxes in this town and they want good services. Mm -hmm. um, I understand everybody's side on these on the uh, new trash trucks, but going back to like the uh, the police cars, you know, you, you mentioned that it takes 18 months or two years, you know, to get these things online. You know, if that's factual, and I'm sure it's factual what you said, and that's what's going to take, then we're already out 18 months or two years. You know, what do we do when when the machines are breaking down things? Um, we do have to, uh, you know, I'm in favor of this right now because I believe, you know. The current residents, the current situation we have in town, people want their trash picked up. What we deal with and how the committees come up with the beach and then the future of that is something we have to put a lot of thought into and it's got to be concluded. I understand that public works in the summertime, you folks don't have enough manpower, you can't get the work done on other projects because we deal with trash mm -hmm. seven days a week. So we do have to come up with a conclusion how that's going to be done. Um, but for myself, you know, putting this off, you know, one of these trucks off 18 months or two years could cost the town a lot more money in, in the long run. And now we're behind a truck, we're behind a vehicle, we can't get the work done. So um, I'm in support of it at this Mr. point. Mr. Bridal? Yeah, I'm in support of it too. Your, your sidearm truck is replacing one that was already gone a year ago. Right. The back loaded packer is one that is being held on by its last legs and wouldn't pass inspection the last time until he's putting a bunch of money into it and probably won't pass again. We've got to do something now. We can't be waiting around forever. So I think this is a smart idea, especially by doing the leases. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. Mrs. Buckley? I am in support of this as Mrs. well. Mrs. Capretis? I am in support of it, as yeah. it's written. The only other comment I'll make, um, as Mr. Jacob said it on a couple occasions on precedent that was set with past motors. Well, precedent was set in this town 50 years ago when businesses took their own trash or had hired out. We do it now. Mm -hmm. So we've got to look back to think about all those, you know, and, and the, the question I'm going to ask, and I've asked Jen this, but I'm going to ask you tonight. If we got rid of commercial trash, totally, which, by the way, all communities do. We don't, we're, the, we're unique. How much would we save in trucks and personnel? Do you know? I don't know. It's never but been. we'd save something. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
So that's the idea I'm putting out there, and you know, as far as baby steps. But we have to remember, we say about the trash and all this stuff, precedent was set, look at, and we know all these businesses, they're all friends of us. We got nine businesses that pay big bucks. They take their trash, they get it taken away. So if they're doing it, we, I, I'm just saying we have to look at it. I like the article, I would have preferred one truck, but I see where the vote is going, so I would see a motion for 126.5, uh, to fund said lease purchase for one year, moved by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Mr. Uh, Henderson. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Six in favor, two opposed. And my op opposition has to do what I wanted to at least kind of be amenable for the tax. The, uh, the opposed were the chairman and the vice chairman. Six to two. And I appreciate the great work you do, but boy, we got to start somewhere. We, we oh, can't. Great, great discussion. Thank you, Chris. And I and I know you and Jen understand that. Um, recycling, we can move through the next couple. We've only got uh, three left. Recycling revolving account, basically, I am very much in favor of this. I think recycling revolving fund, I think Mr. Sullivan alluded to it, Mr. Welch and the public works staff, uh, to start off with 80000 to uh, you know, we want to explain this. I think it's terrific. I mean, we need to do this. It was. It came out of the Solid Waste Committee. That, right. Um, there's somewhere 160 to 200 thousand dollars in gate receipts that's received through the transfer station, and it's always come back to offset taxes. Why? You know, it was there. A number of members uh, initiative or comment that that should maybe uh, come in as a revolving fund so that when uh, the new compactor is needed, it's worn out, we just literally replace it. If, uh, if there's other operational equipment there, uh, why should um, the, you establish this fund and... With the fluctuating market, it allows us right. to Absolutely. have Money's right. yep. Good. A number of things. So, yeah. Yeah, this is, this is an in and out account. Yeah, this so, is this is terrific. And it, it wouldn't, you know, it, it would definitely be controlled by, you know, town treasurer custody. It isn't yep. something like Jen and I can just tomorrow go order a new transfer. But pretty uh, uh, self explained I think it's long overdue. Uh, we have a motion on this. A move by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Ms. Ms. Copertus to go 80000 for the recycling revolving account to um, our public hearing on January 16th. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, that this one, next one should be pretty simple too, based on the, the great feedback Mr. Branch gave along with our public works staff. They, it's in association with, quite frankly, what we we're talking about, Steve, with flooding and allowing property owners, if we build this fund, you know, 50,000 is going to allow these mitigation grant programs on behalf of those owners who may want to get rid of their properties due to a major flooding. So, I mean, I. Uh, anything you want to say anything on that? I mean, I, I know you described it last night pretty straightforward. It's more of the town management article than it is. Yeah, the advanced the assistant, advanced uh, grant. We'd be happy to answer any questions if you have. That this is to set up to essentially set up the process should there be residents that are suffering some of these issues that want to take advantage right. of these FEMA programs. That's yeah. what this does. Right. All right. This is a Rocking up planning is involved in that, some other things of, of setting that up. Yeah. It's not a commitment of any funds to do that yet. It's to set up the process. To Correct. That and to that's the place. important thing. Set up the process. And the thing is, the thing is that as an individual, I can't go to FEMA. It has to go through the town of Hampton, and that's why that's this correct. has to pass. Exactly. Good. Stephen, that's the best point. This is the yeah. voters need to watch this meeting because you just said something very important. If we don't go follow this process, they they cannot go right field to go to set. They have to go home through the town. They got to go through the town. Excellent. I accept the motion to move fifty thousand. The public hearing moved by Mr. Bryle, seconded by Mr. LeBranch. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Um, I had to laugh, and I, I, I have to agree with Mr. Waddell last night because um, I got to tell you, I, I don't know how the rest of you are, but I'm either 95 degrees, I feel like I've been out in the sun, or I'm 40 below zero. <laughs> and so the town office second floor heating system, uh, pros, um, easy for me to say, raised and appropriated the sum of 32000 for the purpose of replacing the town office second floor west, oh, I like it, the west side heating system <laughs> with a heat pump mini. You know, I'm doing good tonight yeah. with this. Yeah, I think Fred going. tried to trick me with this. Yeah. With a heat 
pump mini split system to include all labor, materials, and utility connections with said appropriation be funded from the outside balance. This has to be done. $32,000. So moved. Moved by Mr. Plus, seconded by Mrs. Buckley. All those in favor? <laughs> and we did. Oh, we got one more article. One more. This is a private article, but it's involved money, and I will tell you this involves $500 for step-up parents. Wait, Mr. Chair, before they leave, yes, we actually have two articles more. Um, the I talked to you about the road improvement capital reserve fund. Well, we did 500, but we couldn't do it legally. You had to keep it at 300. So, do we have to discuss that again while they're here? Are we no. keeping that at 300, Fred? Yes, the board did not move it to 500. That's what I thought. Do we need a revote on it? No, because we, no, when we voted to 500, it. we can't change it. But we you approve. can change it at the delivery of session if you wish. I know, and I, I'm just saying that do we need to reapprove this? 300? We're, we're all set, Fred. We're, we're all set? Okay, thank, thank you very much. Right, because we didn't legally have the point to raise that. Right. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. So, and Chris, Jen, thank you. Thank you very much. Article 46, thank Step Up Parents. Um, um, I get. I get to tell you, I, I know people involved in this and people working on this. This is an admirable article. This involves. We talk about kids with drug issues. These are parents of the children and grandparents. And grandparents. Thank you, Jamie. And yeah, this is. Um, I, I highly recommend this. The reason that Mr. Sullivan attests that this is on this year because they're coming to us for the first time. Next year it will be yeah, part of all that, that list. Human services. Yeah. Human yeah. services. That's what I wanted to know. Uh, yeah. Raise an yeah. appropriate $500. Do I have a motion to move that, that to public hearing? Moved by motion. Mr. Barr, seconded by Mr. LaBranche. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Christy has to come up with us. We have a few motions we have to redo. The overall budget, uh, one has to do with the 33000 which we found out last night of reducing the operating budget because one of the vehicles, uh, the rentals and leases, was reduced. Uh, yeah, the, when I was putting the budget in yep, on I, the DRA website, I uh, noticed that the lease for the Mack truck that was uh, passed in 2019 yes. um, was put in for a higher amount than what the lease actually yeah, came in So, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so if you so choose, you can reduce uh, the line for rentals and leases in the highway section by $33,349. Moved by Mr. Pluff to, to reduce line 43111-4400 HSB rentals and leases to $33,300. Uh, uh, actually, you're going to reduce it by $33,349. And sec yeah, right. seconded by Mr. Uh, Henderson. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. And that you'll give us a new operating budget. Right. Number and then I was going to say earlier tonight you moved six, six, sixty five hundred into the cemetery budget. So right. I will make that adjustment and add that to this case. sheet. And then the new uh, proposed budget will be thirty eight million three hundred and twenty eight thousand. I was going to say when you said thirty eight, I was like ten million in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want technical trucks. Did it at 9:30? Did you notice that? You did it at 9:30. 28 million, 328,836 dollars, and the difference between that and the default will still be the budget will still be under the default, but it'll drop to being under the default by 6,199. dollars Great. So this is for the operating budget change. So I accept the motion of 28 million 328 thousand. $836 moved by Ms. Caperta, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. And uh, thank you. And a couple quick things before we adjourn. Um, very important, we'll be meeting January 14th in this room for any last minute. It probably will be a quick meeting because the reason we have to meet, we get last minute petition warrant articles with money or any other things we need to vote on. Fred and Jamie will get to us if, you know, sometimes things happen or Christy last minute. And reminder, very important too, next Thursday night, January 16th, our public hearing on both the school and the town is to be held at, at the, the new auditorium at Hampton Academy. And there's two ways of getting in there, but the best way I tell everybody is the old 
the entrance to the school off Academy Avenue, go right in the auditorium. Right by the flagpole. Go to the flagpole. Go to the flagpole. <laughs> That's exact. Thank you. Go I learned flagpole. something. The flagpole's always in front of the building. And I'll tell you, if you haven't seen it, it's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> and just so that you know, they're going to be broadcasting on both the school channel and town. Um, um, it's going to be hopefully. live. It's hopefully. It's <laughs> well, We're uh, attending. Uh, Kathleen yeah. Murphy told me it's going to yeah, happen. It's so it's going to happen. Okay, but it'll, it'll be streamed on 22 for sure. Um, and well, Bob is safe in that. We need this. Anybody have any closing uh, comments before we adjourn? Thank you. Thank you, the viewers at home. And Channel 22. And Channel 22, as always.